Conductor, we have a problem. We are back. Episode 52, a lot of energy in here today, man. Yes, sir. I was on today. I got some good sleep. Yes, sir. Dale looks well rested. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we are back. Episode 52, the Ray Lewis episode. Hey, man, I'm glad you beat me to it. I was like, oh, I'm so excited to bench Ray Lewis. Like, yeah. One of my favorite players of all time. Yeah. Greatest linebacker ever. But welcome back. Yes, Stop. Subscribe. Below. Please. Thank you. Um, like. Like all of that. Uh, all the socials are in the bio. Please give us a follow, um, a share, anything you can. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Nice. But as it said, we are on episode 52, man. Just moving right along. Second episode this week. Uh, we work hard on y'all, just in case y'all thought. Boop, right. boop, um, boop. This this is no easy drive for Ish, so clap it up for him. Oh, man. For making the drive on a Friday at 5 o'clock during rush hour. That's, it's crazy. That's I some work, man. Right, I don't go out a lot, but I remember I was on the way. And my, I always check, you know, you live in Atlanta, you check his UPS no matter where you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I got in the car. It said an hour and 10. I was like, man, that just feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that real? <laughs> <laughs> it was like an hour and 12, man. <laughs> so, I know you're not lying because the other day, Javante and Tyrone hit me and was like, you want to go hoop, bro? And I said, hell yeah, let's go. They said church and covenants. And I said, bet I'm on the way. Check the thing. They said an hour and 10 minutes. I said, <laughs> what? Are you crazy? What? I'm going to get there. Y'all going to be done. Are you crazy? Nah. <laughs> you imagine driving, driving home in an hour and 10 minutes after the week? Can yes. you imagine? Yes. I can't. I flip mine. I flip mine. I'm you know so how tired. mad you are, especially after a good hoop session and you right. got forty five so minutes brothers, an hour. You got your sweaty t shirt on one side. You got the t shirt you already took off in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> you want the one you wear. You want to take off. You just don't want to drive through traffic with no <laughs> shirt on. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Shout out to the days of no AC and no hoop session. Bro, what? Was a boy growing up, man, man. Listen, man, I, remember, I was walking around. I was like, man, back in like, bro. Listen, that's how you know we old, bro. Back, I was like, man, back in the day, some weather like this, with no, when I would be doing that, hooping, bro. <laughs> nothing but hooping, bro. Walk outside, it's a breeze on like, October. Yeah, day, bro. We would have hit the church. It'd have been twenty minutes. Oh, the church is every block. Salute to y'all. Salute to us still, out, whoever is still out there. And while we're saluting, as always, salute to the women. Oh, place it, man. Salute <laughs> to the black woman in Atlanta, man. Oh, oh my God. God. We can't do it without you. So, salute to the women leaving their boyfriend. Hey. October 6th yeah. is the date. And if you know, if you have, unless you've been living under a rock, then you know what has happened today. Uh, Drake has dropped an album. We have football to get to. We got a little bit of basketball to get to. But when Drake drops, you stop what you're doing. You listen to Drake and you talk about it. Whether that's on a podcast or with your friends, you're going to talk about it with somebody. Right. In your group so, chat. Group chat, Twitter, something. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before this, before we start, I'll let you guys then kind of break the third wall, um, as we literally always do. <laughs> <laughs> I have not said one word to Ish about this album. Right. So I do not know what he feels. If he's read the group chat, he kind of knows how it feels, but that was a listen and a half ago, so some things have changed. So I'm interested to see what he has to say. Um, as we mentioned, this album came out at 6 in the morning yeah. on October 6th. Uh, I hate you, Drake. Uh, Hilarious. <laughs> I had, Absolutely. I had everything I needed ready to listen yeah. to the album at midnight, and I get it 5 o'clock. He's like, yeah, 6 a.m. Sorry to my streamers. I said, I, I don't get it. <laughs> but before we continue, <laughs> if you woke up at 6 a.m. only to listen to this album. Oh, yeah, I know what you are. Gail. Yeah. I know what you are. <laughs> 1 800 Gail. Yeah. You was up at 6 a.m. just listening to the album. I know what you I, are. I know what you are, and I know what you may do. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <sighs> let's, let me take you back to mm-hmm. last week. So I, actually, not even last week, Monday. Yeah. When we spoke on Monday, I said, I'm really, really expecting this to be Drake's one. Like, yeah. I'm expecting this to be no doubt album of the year, talk of the week, mm-hmm. uh, two, three hundred thousand first week, 150,000 next week, maybe another 100,000 week, three weeks in a row. Like, that's what I was expecting. Right. Until last night when he dropped the track list. Okay. He drops the track list, and I see 23 songs. 23 songs. So God damn it, yeah. Drake. I said, why did you, why did you do this? Yeah. Man? And so... Let me explain why I feel that way, and then I'm gonna pass it to Ish. Okay. Before I say a word about the album, this is literally just why the 23 songs made me, and then I'm gonna let him talk about the album. 23 songs tells me that 
This is a playlist of the music Drake has been recording that has been for other albums that he may have made for this album. Right. And he's been working on this while he's on tour. Certified Lover Boy was 21 songs, 22 songs. Yeah, I think so. Honestly, Never Mind was another 15, 16 songs. Mm -hmm. And Certified Love, I mean, her loss was 15 songs? I think 15 or 14. 14 to 15 yeah. songs. So you're talking about roughly 52 songs that have come out in the past three years that have just been from Drake. That's yeah. not including any features. That's not including anything he's wrote for other people. Right. That's not including the music that he recorded that did not get put out. Mm -hmm. And then you drop a 23 song album, which takes up that total to 70 songs in a two year span. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't care who you are, how good you are at making music. It's not sustainable to drop music at that clip in the way you are announcing the music. Because I bring you back to Lil Wayne in 07 to 08. Lil Wayne was dropping mixtapes. And when you went to Lil Wayne mixtapes, you knew you were getting two minutes, three minutes of him just rapping, right. maybe a quick hook and some features and some fun. Good and then when the album came out, when it was Carter two, Carter three time, it was like, okay, this is a more cohesive, this is more cohesive, and one sound, we're gonna stick to something. Right. With Drake, if he would have called this album a playlist, mm -hmm. everybody is different. Everybody feels yes. different. Yeah. Now. But because of the the hype, the energy, the the constant buildup of the album, Lil Yachty yeah. talking about some of Drake's best verses are on here. Drake constantly pushing the album back. Yeah. Like, I know you guys are gonna love I'm this. Really you think you want the old Drake? I'm gonna give you the old Drake. Yeah. And all of this led to disappointment, which is why I usually say, and I said let this on Monday, don't go into albums with expectations. Right. But when you're as great as Drake, you it's hard to go into an album without expectations. Right. And so I say all of that to pass it to Ish and right. for him to give the first review I've heard from him. Okay, so like all real niggas did, I woke up at 11. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't waking up at 6. <laughs> I, I don't work on Friday, so I did. I woke up like 10, 11, mm -hmm. was making breakfast. I would, so because the the let me, to just give y'all like my forward perspective, this dropping in the morning really perturbed my process a bit because like you know I, I don't like I woke up I was like man should I listen to it just like all mm -hmm. jump like mm -hmm. they, they call it awake and drink. I was like <laughs> I was, you know I was, you know let me eat breakfast you know <laughs> breakfast in the shower awake and drink. Yeah, then it was like noon. I was like, all right, if I'm not, you know, let me just do it now. I'm not doing nothing. So, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I, I think, I think the way you described it is perfect as a playlist. And ironically, uh, as I was thinking about it, it was in combination with like how we talked about how the Griselda sound is expanding. Mm -hmm. How when we heard the conductor single we was like oh yeah we're but we're so back <laughs> shout out conductor williams shout out griselda all the all the you know slime dirt ball music that you know yeah, for right and you see how big it is but it's so perfect to call it a playlist because now that sound is just a part of the playlist yep as opposed to a sound shift or a focused song or album type mm -hmm. this is just another type of sound that will be on the playlist now okay. And you get those different type of songs from Drake, and he, uh, I thought it was an okay album. I didn't think it was. I and it's not something that I don't. It wasn't like her loss by like any means. And, and I know people expect like whenever you, someone says they don't like a Drake project, that they just don't like Drake. But like the way we got out here and talked about her loss compared to how we're gonna talk about this <laughs> is completely night and day. Just because the energy was way way stronger throughout the entire album because it's shorter. The songs were, it, it, everything on her loss felt more intentional, felt more, this is what we're trying to do. Maybe 100%. it's because it had two heads on it, calls with Twin Savage and Drake, 100%. both making it. Mm -hmm. But this definitely felt like, you know, rap is a business, I'm Drake, my Lucy's are worth 300K first week. All right. So, <laughs> you, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll pick it up from there. <laughs> I say this a lot, yeah. and it's actually one of my very good to say. <laughs> Yo, you know how many people Drake pay? Yeah, bro, right? Like, yeah. You know how many people get paid I, on Drake dropping an album? Feed today. Feed. It's some niggas. 
had a vacation plan October 12th because yep. he knew Drake was dropping the fifth. It was like, oh, bet we could, he could hold okay, it. Pay. Two. Bill Niggas King telling their wives, I got it. Don't worry. I got it. I got just that. Just hold me. What you want for Christmas? Yeah, just wait till October. I got it. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. So, saying that, that is what this album sounds like. Exactly. Yo, Drake, you promised us something. Get it out to us. Yeah. It does not sound like Drake is inspired making this. Yeah. Man. It sounds like I am Drake. I am ultra talented and I like to make music. So, let me go to the studio and have some fun and make some music. Right. That's what it sounds like. It does not give me an album feel. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I want that to be noted. Like yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not mad about it. This this isn't a hate session, not yet. Not even a little bit. We'll see how it goes. May I might get there. Yeah, I might yeah. make myself mad as I continue to talk, but right now I'm yeah. not mad. I'll speak to Yachty for <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not mad. I am more so just disappointed in the way he treated this album. Yeah. Because I think the difference between this album and Certified Lover Boy is that Certified Lover Boy, it came with the rollout, but he wasn't on tour talking about the album every night yeah. and and uh, saucing story. up the album, making yeah. it seem like it's some crazy project. Yeah. It was just like, oh, I'm finna drop the album, here's some billboards, here's a little rollout, yeah. and then it's gonna drop. And so the expectations weren't super, super high. I mean, they were Drake expectations, right? But it, that album still felt more like an album to me. But although it was a little lengthy, it still felt more like an album. And out of those 20 songs, 21 songs, I'm pretty sure I kept 18 of them. Yeah. Like, it was a lot, a lot of good music on here, on that album. And I do think it is good music on this album, too, a good bit of it. Yeah. But it just feels, back to our key word of the day, it feels playlisty. Yeah. It feels like, all right, this section kind of goes Let's put these five songs here. Right. These four songs kind of fit together. Let's put these four yeah. songs here. And then let's throw in some interludes and let's have some people come narrate to make it feel like it's connected. Right. When in honesty, it's just not. And maybe if you, as we've said about any long album, if you cut this down to 17 songs, you cut yeah. this down to 16 songs, we're having a different conversation. Yeah, those people, but that's how those people are yours. The, the y'all said y'all don't like this album, but y'all post a song. <laughs> He dropped 24 songs, nigga. You like, think Drake would drop 24 bad songs? Yeah, like I'm not like one of them. Come on. But like the, the way I really want to describe this album was, and, and it just hit me when we were talking about hooping. We've all were at a we've all been to a hoop session mid-game and nobody's kind of taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. But we're kinda out, you know, we're out. We're out, we're out here, yeah. Niggas happy to be hooping. It's probably the fourth or fifth game. Yeah, you right, know. Right, right. Niggas not diving on loose balls, but you know, we still mm -hmm. that's kind of the Drake album is like, yeah. I've been dropping music. I'm gonna keep dropping music. Mm -hmm. I got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. I got other niggas bills to mm -hmm. pay. Um, it felt uh, like you said, uh, uninspired, which is understandable. Like rap is a business, mm -hmm. and I, and of course, art and business will always intersect at some point. Uh, once you're an artist as big as Drake, where he's not gonna have the freedom to do everything he wants, but. You can definitely hear, like, you can just hear the difference mm -hmm. in some songs. Yeah. You can hear the difference, like, oh, yeah, he was recording this for her loss. Like, that's what he wanted. That's what yeah. Drake song? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, this is for her mm -hmm. loss. Or you can, like, on AM and Charlotte, you can hear, like, oh, yeah, he really, he meant re this. yeah, he really wanted to do this. He been, he's a, a fan of conductor for a couple years now, apparently. Mm -hmm. This is something he really wanted to do. You can hear the focus. In, and, what, and that's why it's so... Impressive to me on both ends that like he's able to still make the music on the other side of like not really locking in. I guess like he's sleeping to twenty five a night like Bro used to. <laughs> that shit. Because that shit. when he do lock in, like the three best verses on this album, you could argue are all on one song. <laughs> like, like, I would, like you can really take all three songs from A and all three verses from A M. And you can put them up with any of the verses there for all different reasons, but each one you can hear the focus. Right. Each one you can hear the focus. And the other song is like, man, like this would probably be great music if I was on the way to school or like if I was doing something or, you know. And it's just a different listen. Exactly. Yeah. It's a different listen than what he was giving us. Right. What what, what he was telling us it was going yeah, to be. Yeah, like an album album. Yes. Like, so I think it's going to take a week or two for people to come around and get back to it and be like, okay, I like this song. Right. Like, it's going to be 12 songs, 15 songs. Some people will take 20. 
from this album, people are taking people riding around listening to like they were her loss. It just won't be the like I was riding around listening to her loss start, start to finish. finish, start to finish. finish. So and it won't right. be that, and that's okay. Again, when you get to Drake's height and, and status, as it's just sad, bro. It's just certain things you are out of your control. So yeah. I'm not finna come in here and kill the biggest and best artist of our generation for dropping a long album. Like, so this one is because because we worked on because we we could have went to eight but we mm-hmm. kept it possible. Yeah. Happy first. Yeah, we so were that, growing a lot. Yeah, that, yeah. absolutely. Because <laughs> it was a day I would have came here and cooked it. But I actually want to defend Drake. This whole like Drake has turned paranoid and turned misogynistic stuff. Listen, y'all can just not like the album, but this been here for a minute. Like that's it, and it may sound crazy to say out loud. But Drake being paranoid and misogynistic is one of my favorite features about Drake. Like some of Drake's best bars are the most paranoid shit you ever heard. Like Drake was going through bitches' phones while he was in the bathroom. Like it's not like Drake got super big and then became paranoid. Like he been paranoid since day one. <laughs> and misogynistic. That's that's a part of his aura, his brand. Bro, for like people where like that's who Drake is and why people are drawn to Drake. So. Uh, just some standout tracks because I don't want you. Again, I don't hate this. It is it is twenty four Drake songs. There is no way you hate this whole thing right. unless you just hate Drake. But some standouts. Oh, stop! Before I even say a standout, J Cole. Oh yeah, shout out J Cole. J Cole. Shout out J Cole. Cole. What? Yeah. Okay. Nah, yeah, shout hey out Drake. Cole. You scared? Nah, Drake. Hey, you don't gotta tell us. You don't ever gotta say it. Yeah. But one day when we when we sit down and we interview and we talk, have a yeah. nice conversation with you Listen, off camera. When we the gonna, cameras cut off, we gonna get you a minute. You yeah. you heard that verse? You didn't, you didn't want to listen. <laughs> you got that verse back. It was like, all right, we going somewhere else. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hey, let me let me hang this shit up again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah J Cole wasn't playing. Though, he actually. you wasn't yeah. coming behind that. Man. Ball. I was like, nah. So, <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, so yes, first off, shout out J. Cole, amazing verse, amazing future run. Very excited for your album. Um I like the first five songs. Like first six. Like all the way at first through six, I was cool with. Yeah. I knew at that point already what I was in for. Okay. By the time I got to six, I was like, okay, so this isn't really like mm-hmm. uh, a crazy album, but this couldn't be some good music. Right. right. And so I had changed my mindset. Um Yeet, matter of fact, no, don't like that song. Uh, the, I don't like Not samples. Me either. <laughs> the, I don't like samples. Seven, seven, nine, six, nine, seven. Yeah, crazy. Uh, Love song, you out. Bahamas promises. Try our best. All crazy. Drew yeah. Picasso, crazy. What will Pluto do? Crazy. A and M, Charlotte, crazy. Everything else. The last like five songs on here, I'm kind of straight on. Um, I like Rich Baby Daddy. I'll never turn it on again. But it was a cool pop. It reminds me of Poppy's Home off the yeah. Certified Lover Boy, a song I like, but I'm not really going to go back to. But when I hear it in the function, I'm enjoy it. I'm yeah. enjoy it. It's going to be Shout a Shout out to Um And BBL Love Interlude was good. As I said, I probably just named 10, 12 songs. It's a lot of good music on here. It's a lot of Drake. The one critique I do have that actually was making me mad, the only thing I am actually angry about is why are you not rapping? <laughs> Where did that go? Like, yeah. why? Are, what is this like hype man jumbotron flow type shit you doing, bro? Like, it's cool that you're great, at, but like, can you rap? Yeah, it's like it's like three really rap songs in here. Yeah, it's, it's and that's frustrating. That is what happened. That's that's probably the most frustrating thing, especially coming from me because I'm not a big like, like. Ironically, in this scenario, like I'm not usually the rappy rap nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, no. I am not the the nigga who wants you to get on there three verses sixteen each. Like I you know, <laughs> get off, dog. Get but off. <laughs> but Drake was all was always one of those exceptions because Drake is one of the best rappers we have. Factual. Best rappers we've seen. Factual. So for him to just not do it, and like. It is frustrating, and it reminds me of, uh, like, when Honestly Nevermind came out. I was like, man, that's great. So did you decide to rap to it at any point? Like, did you have any of that, too? Like, like, wow, I'm so happy you're having fun with this. Do you want to rap, too? Please, please. Like, please? Because, like, it always peaks its head, too. And he always has one or two on there that was like, man, if I just, oh, I forget to storm a scorpion. He's like, niggas want a classic. That's just Teddy. He's like, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Please, please, please bro. Put Teddy, Tell us. Put Teddy on the tape. You just nigga. told yourself. Literally, bro. Make 10. Yo, man. Like, like it would change. I, I, well, I, I know it would be hard to understand, like, for a rapper already that big. It would change Drake perception a lot. If he dropped the 12 song rap album. Bro, 12 songs rap. Everything would change yeah. Drake. And that leads me into my next question. 
disclaimer for the very strong opinionated Drake fans who might not like this question. But it needs to be asked because I am interested. And if you if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment. Does Drake have a magnum opus? A magnum opus? No, 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 no. No, no, does he no. have a twisted fantasy, a Carter Three, a blueprint? Right. A a a. a does he have that? A good kid, bad city. No, I don't think he does. And we talked about kind of Drake's career, big picture wise. It's hard for us to like like really map it out since mm -hmm. he's like still. Maybe let's say <laughs> let's say even at worst he's seventy percent through. Like, <laughs> but we have talked about it in small context, and I have always thought like views was supposed to be. And I think Views was a turning point, not just for Drake, just for rap in general, too, because he was so big, like, that album could have went a different way. Like, if it was better, well-received initially throughout those first couple of years, we don't know how big Drake would have really ended up. Because right before Drake, right before Views drop, is the biggest I've ever seen any artist in my lifetime. Of course, we went around with Michael Jackson, but, you know, I've had Kanye... Uh, called a little late hove, Lil Wayne when I first started rapping. But Drake, especially in the 21st century, with how different music is sold, Drake was on the front cover of every streaming service for the first time I'd ever seen that. Like, where a whole, whole services, Apple, Spotify, were like, yeah, y'all need to get this from us. <laughs> Don't just get it, y'all gotta get it from us. Right. Like, I remember right. people, like, it was, I think it was when Apple Music first started to pop up. Like, it was. I, I remember people it was. first bought Apple Music to listen to these. Yes, yes. It, so yes. it was such a big, great, great point. It was such a big culture change where, like, it, right now, if someone doesn't have, if someone doesn't have a streaming service, that seems weird. But there was a time where it wasn't like that. Not even, yeah, it was super normal. It was super normal to just buy a music or have your CDs. So I think with Drake that. being the first person to kick open that door, we didn't see the growth that we could have on the other side because of how that album was perceived. All right. I love that answer. So obviously the album that everybody is punching their phones, screaming is nothing was the same, nothing was the same, nothing was the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the magnet. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the pinnacle, a peak. Because I think that is what solidified Drake. Yeah. I think nothing was the same was the one that was like, oh, no, he's the best. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what that's that would be my retort to that is that is the one that started all this. Yes. And so, so far, thank me later and so far gone were the introduction. Mm -hmm. Take care was the confirmation that Drake is who we think he is. Right. And nothing was the same was the confirmation that he should be held at a higher standard than everybody else. Right. And he was arguably the best rapper on earth right now. Yeah, like, like Take Care was, okay, he may be a star. Nothing was the same was, oh, he's the star in rap. And after that moment, mm -hmm. you have to deliver on an album that stops everything. Right. Card 3, again. Blueprint, again. Um, life After Death. I mean, not Life After Death. Uh, yeah, Life After Death. Um... Twisted Fantasy. Yep. These albums stopped everything. Right. I don't know if Drake has done that due to the music right. and not due to the, his name is Drake. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, Drake is the biggest artist, artist in the world, so let everybody stop and listen to his album. Yeah, that's what happened because you're Drake. But I am talking about the feel. The energy when you go outside of big cities, when you go outside of Atlanta, New York, and LA, and Drake drops this album is different. Right. I don't think he has provided that moment. The funny thing is, unlike the rest of them, he's 15 years in. I still think from what I'm hearing from him, he can do that. Oh, yeah. I still, it wouldn't surprise me if he does take that approach and do a 12 song <coughs> album to let y'all know, like, I'm him, and I, this is like I can do everything, right. and I chose to drop those long ass albums. Mm -hmm. But views is and was was supposed to be that album. Right, views was supposed to be fourteen songs. Yeah. It was supposed to be the best fourteen songs off of views, and if it is the best fourteen songs off of views. We're looking at Views as one of the greatest albums yeah. ever, and that rollout that time in rap as one of the greatest times in rap ever. Exactly. And, um, 
you know, of course, I, I would never listen. I would never question the brand. That is Drake. But there are decisions around it that, you know, decisions around Drake for how things have been released, how things have sounded, that also have heard it. And I remember thinking, what was my favorite Drake release? Like, build up release, favorite rollout. And ironically, it was more life. And I don't remember, I don't know if uh, people remember, but more life, I think at 11 p.m., they started OVO Sound Radio. Mm -hmm. And everyone listened to it at the same time mm -hmm. on OVO Sound Radio. Mm -hmm. Th that, I, that, I remember being the closest to like a big Drake moment that we all shared because the whole world, Twitter, Instagram, everyone was on OVO Sound Radio listening to More Life the first time. Like we all heard Teenage Mutant mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. We all heard Do Not Disturb mm -hmm. for the first time together mm -hmm. as the last song to, to close out that album. But we have never got like we never got the the ninety two Jordan season out of Drake. Yeah. We never got the 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 for sixteen months. Everything went right. Everything hit. Like we had that time where Kanye and Ho where when my beautiful dark twisted fantasy watched the throne. Or Ho me with blueprint one, two, three, the mixtape, all those together. Or Wayne, album, mixtape, album. We never got the the cause of that's why I keep saying views that was supposed to be it because we had if you're reading it's too late so the hype from that and then features 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 it 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 all the way up to views where he already had a number one on views mm -hmm. he already had a number one like views was views was gone before it even dropped so if everything on views had worked the way it would the way way he wished it would have or the way we hoped it would have it would be that would be one. I'm not going to say because views did views did a million, right? About that. Views did a it might have been my eight hundred. Views did a million in streaming. That's insane. Like that is ridiculous. ridiculous fucking bro. nuts. And I, I and let me pause again here. Not pause, but let me say again here and just add a little side fact. Yeah. Nothing was the same as one of the great rap, greatest rap albums ever. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Nothing was the same as Drake's best album by far. It is a perfect ten out of ten classic album. I am not. We're not saying that he doesn't have that. We're talking about, as he said, the moment in rap, the '92 Jordan season, the '08 yeah. Kobe season, '09 Kobe season, the '2012 Bron, where everything goes right from features to albums to interviews to performances. To everything goes right from start to finish. He hasn't had that as the phenomenon Drake. He became the phenomenon Drake because of Take Care of Nothing was the same and the perfect albums are. But after that moment, we haven't gotten the the oh shit, he might be the best nigga. Like in 08 after the car three drop, niggas was like, is Wayne the best nigga? Yeah. Best rapper ever. Yeah. Like that's the moment we were looking for from Drake. And of course the only way people said that after verses, after some songs, yeah. after a chunk of songs in the album, but it hasn't been like a moment in time where every talk show, every radio show, podcast, media is like, is Drake the greatest? I, I don't is want that, to, that's what's missing. I hate that we like I don't hate it because like this is who we are and it's ironically <laughs> the whole reason we made the show. But <laughs> we compare back and forth music so much. But Views was Steph losing in 2016, and before and before you look before you go off and get mad at me, it, it tell me the 17 is the best series ever. <laughs> sure, that's for you. I'm not taking this, but maybe the best series ever. I agree too. But allow me to provide this context where for 500, 600 days, Steph Curry was the best basketball. You could say best Steph Curry was the best basketball ever. He won the MVP, won the championship. So that's one season, 82 games. And through the fight up until they lost in the finals, it you couldn't you couldn't argue up to that point. They just won seventy three games again as MVP, so it would have been a solid two calendar years. Steph Curry is going to be, be the best player on earth. They win that series, then whole whole world's different. But like you're right there having the perfect year, the perfect legacy so far. And if you look at where Drake was when the views dropped, I went and double checked the numbers. The numbers are just silly. He did a million first week and it was only on Apple Music. <laughs> he did a million first week. That's 
disgusting. And it was no. only on Apple That's Music. Disgusting. And I would defy Drake fans or people that believe we're Drake haters to find me another point in Drake's career where he was nearly as popular as that, even while being the most popular rap artist for the last 15 years of my entire life. That was pinnacle peak. He was hosting the All Star game, the yeah, All Star yeah, yeah. game and stuff. Mm-hmm. He was F- 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 he was an ambassador for mm-hmm. the Raptors. That was peak Drake popularity. Million in the first week. Three number ones on that out. Hotline Bling, Control of One Dance. That's before we even get to the rapping side. So if that had popped the way it would have, that album would have probably changed the face of music for a while. Mm-hmm. But it did go the other way. I, I, you know, I just broke. And we, we broke down these many times. But. Lastly, yeah. to close this, close this little Drake segment yeah. up. For those of you that are saying views is that moment, yeah. Ask somebody. Go look at a reaction to somebody saying they don't like Twisted Fantasy, or somebody saying Carter Three isn't a classic, mm-hmm. or somebody saying Blueprint isn't a classic, mm-hmm. and then go look at how people talk about views. Right. And that's your answer. When you have a great album, you get looked at like you're stupid yeah. if you talk about one of those albums in the wrong way. Yeah. When you speak on views. Now, if you're talking to Jalen, shut up, the PTG. If you're talking to Jalen, yeah. if you're talking to, if you're talking to a uh, huge Drake fan, right? They OVO gonna look at you on. Yeah. OVO, shut up, Barry. If you're talking to a huge shut Drake up. fan, you won't get but that reaction. But right. if you're talking to a casual rap fan where they like Drake a lot, but he's not the yeah. one of one all mighty high rapper. Yeah, that's some people have six guys. <laughs> if he's not that to you. And you say Views is just okay, or Views is a good album, but it was too long or too many. You just, okay, that's normal. Mm-hmm. You go say the Carter Three is ass, or you go say Twisted Fantasy is ass, or one of these classic albums. You're gonna get looked at like you're stupid. Even nothing was the same, we'll stay on Drake. Even nothing was the same. You say nothing was the same was ass or wasn't a classic, people gonna look at you like you're stupid. People don't do that with the Views because it's not that, and that's all we're saying. Um, so, yeah, I will. We'll be back next week, sometime middle of the week, and I will have more to say about this album because 24 songs, you can't digest it in 18 hours. So That's um, right. I will have more to say about this album. But to an upcoming album, Offset. Yeah. An album I'm really, really excited for. Facts. I've been very interested in the rollout. I love that Offset is releasing a lot of snippets, going to clubs, going to appearances, and just playing songs from yeah. that album to let you know I'm here to. I'm not here to play. Yeah. You play the Don Tower feature, play the... Uh, Cardi the, feature. The Cardi feature. He yeah. came out at uh, Travis and Scott show about four or five months ago and played a song off of that. That song is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard the two snippets because I'm trying to like be surprised about the whole album. So, right. what are you expecting? That's all I really have to ask. So, I've always been, you know, I've always been a huge Offset fan. I always thought Offset was the best we go because uh, I think Offset was the best, like, probably pure rapper art can take off between those two. But I'm expecting a lot of good music. I think Offset has a lot of outside influences that improves the way his music is perceived the way (laughs) (laughs) and you know his proximity to Cardi and being you know I don't I don't want to say like in a better position just because of that no you're right but listen listen listen, it helps to make the album when you got more money to spend the album thank you you know when when you got Cardi on the song I'll add one thing to that Cardi has a team behind her Putting out hits, yeah, and and making hits for her. Facts, you get that, man. yeah. Like you get even if you don't get all of it, right. you get a little piece of it. And listen, you get the Jay Z button. You got your wife on the feature right. on the album. That's a cheat code. I'd use it too. Every time, give me all her friends. Yeah. Every time, every time, and listen, every drop for real. <laughs> every and, drop. Yeah, you know he's branching out. Yeah, I think he got a song with Lavo too on there. I'm really right. excited to see how it's gonna sound because Offset, great pure rapper, and he has a good ear for beats. He has a really good ear for beats, and. He, the most important thing is he has an ear for beats that fit him. Yeah. And that is why I'm excited for this album, and I think it has album of the year potential. And when I say album of the year potential, I mean, like, undisputed album of the year. Like, people turn to this on and it, on Friday at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you on sort of like, oh, album of the year, album of the year. Oh, yeah. That's the type of, that's what I'm talking about. I think it has mm-hmm. that type of potential. But I think it needs to be 12 songs. It needs to yeah. be 14 songs. Because... Where I don't think Offset is gonna, what I don't think he would benefit from is a super long album because he has a very 
specific sound. He's right. not Drake where I can go from Jumbotron to R&B to full rap. Yeah. He's not that. He's not. And I, again, we spoke about this last week with Rod Wave or two weeks ago with Rod Wave. Like most people are. Like that's yeah. a that's a one percent of one of one thing. Yeah. And his lane that he is in, he is the best and created a whole flow, whole style, and he's the best at it. So if he sticks in that flow for fourteen, not not even flow, just the sound. If he sticks on that sound for fourteen songs, we might have yeah. a classic on our hands. No, that's fine. I I. And I'm, I'm excited because his first album was good. His first solo yeah, album right. was really good. Yeah. Um, and Quavo's first solo album wasn't that great, but his second one was really, was good. really good. I'm yeah. really, I still, I'm still listening to Rocket Power. Yeah. Um, so I expect the same growth from Offset, and Offset's first album being as good as it was is just really, really exciting to see what he's about yeah. to do. And he's hosting. He's having a concert Thursday night. Yeah. Before the album comes out. Man, I saw that. <laughs> Boy, I, saw that. I, I really, I really and really find it though. But you did mention how he's uh, doing interviews and stuff. I love that. I love the old school rollout. Let's do a bunch of interviews. Let's do a bunch of appearances. Let's go everywhere. Let's talk to Kaisenet. Let's talk to Bobby. Let's talk to all those people. Let's show up at the uh, uh, Colorado game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just put my face everywhere. Literally. See me everywhere. I, I, I love that. The interview he had with, uh, with Shorty was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him. Shout out to her. Um, I, lo- I love to see just the old school type of. Me too. Me yeah. too. Just simple. Let's get in front of these people and touch as many people. I love. I like the Bobby interview because it puts them in front of faces that may not have yeah. not been, may have not uh, gotten a look at. Because Atlanta's gonna listen to his album. Yeah. The South is gonna listen to his album. You're trying to get hit those markets that you usually yeah. really tap into. Like Cardi. It was a funny too. interview too. It's, it was a funny interview. Like yeah. don't even talk to shit like people from Atlanta. Like you can't. Yeah. You can't do that. Like we just. It we was, gonna win. He was gonna win every bad. He was gonna win every bad. I want to go something to offset. Shout out to that video he made getting off the plane when old, when they was pressing him. That's like that's like that's one of the funniest. That's one of the funniest interviews. Y'all niggas broke. He said niggas niggas standing outside. <laughs> that is the funniest. That like bro, that is the funniest reaction. Cause like bro, that would have been my reaction. Like y'all niggas standing outside right now. Like, y'all just standing there. Atlanta, 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 Atlanta. Um, <laughs> so, all right, so yeah, that concludes our music section yeah, of the day. Mm. All right, dude. Oh, wait, I actually did have one. Earl Sweatshirt Alchemist Void Near did drop on streaming yesterday. Oh, it did drop. Yeah, it came out on streaming yesterday. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's crazy. It is? I, it's I, crazy. I, listen to, I, I have something to say about yeah. that. I have not gotten a chance to listen to it. I was looking for it in the browser. I didn't never search his name. Yeah. But in the browser, I couldn't find it. Well, because it, it technically released like a couple months ago or something. Like they oh. sold it and then put it on. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So the release date might have been messed up. I, I got I, I got it on title, but okay. like I had like pre saved already. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tap into that this week. Yeah, so I, yeah, I know you don't know my rapper. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, it's some rapper you rapper. Yeah, like, you know, that's my bad. So. <laughs> if. Again, October 6th. On October 5th, we found out some shit nobody knew except for me and Ish. Yep. Justin Fields can play football. And he can throw the ball. Bro. <gasps> he can pass oh, the ball. Too. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't run the same play three times in a row, you get to play quarterback. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the guy crazy. that was the second-best quarterback from 2012 until now it can play football. <gasps> oh it's crazy God. to hate watching the game. I was so mad watching that game. <laughs> I was so mad watching the game, bro. Because, like, 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 first of all, so, so shout out to the Bears. 40 burger, they lost 13 straight games in a row. Mm-hmm. Going dating back in the last season. Mm-hmm. Um, they still have the first pick in the draft. Shout out to the Panthers. Mm-hmm. So losing didn't hurt too much. Um, but Justin Fields, DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Salute to DJ Moore. Three touchdowns, 230 yards, and like eight playing catches. This week. You're playing him at wow. So look, Ooh. shout out to Sterling. Sterling <laughs> tweeted last night. Sterling tweeted last night what DJ Moore is doing in fantasy. It's disgusting, and I'm scared to check my phone to see if I'm playing. <laughs> I said, well, I guess I am too. <laughs> so, like, 45 minutes went by, and I said, all right, let me back to play. <laughs> 49 points. Oh, Jesus. I was, it said he had 49 points to my zero, I was, because I didn't know what. I said, no, he got I said, no, he got, he got like three Bears players. That's what it is. Yeah, I think he got three Bears players. He got the defense. He got a running back. <laughs> he got a running back. 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 He got a running back
so uh, I would be three and two. No, nothing is worse than when you're like, especially even on Sundays, when you peep somebody's kind of going crazy, and you're like, damn, am I playing it right now? Like every week, I have like, oh my god, am I playing that nigga right now? Like, I know I broke somebody's heart last week with Christian McCaffrey. No, you're that guy. You're that. Listen, I, I check every about two thirty after CMC scored once or twice. I'm like, damn, is he doing it to me? Like, no, none of this works to check it out, but shout out to the Bears. Uh, you know what? We'll take credit for this, too. Shout out to the Bears for listening. They finally listened to us. A bunch of things we asked to see, we finally saw. We saw the tush push, finally. Hand the ball to another tight end again. I may spaz one more time. Just keep doing it. Justin Fields didn't even go down. He didn't even go down on the, on the sneak. He was still standing when they blew the whistle. Like, he could have kept running. Like, it's ridiculous. You weren't running this before. But the ball down the field. Surprisingly, a deep ball thrower. He looked amazing just throwing deep balls the whole game. Shout out to uh shout out to Forbes on the commanders. Listen, it's the NFL, you know, <laughs> you know it's a standard little Thursday night game. Sometimes they don't call it a push off early. You know, DJ so, DJ so will hit you with like three of the he makes in the veteran, give him the, the, the rib push because mm-hmm. he's never mm-hmm. gonna get that call. No, like, never. No, but uh, they ripped them apart start to finish. Last week on this show, I probably, we probably jinxed them. I said, if the, you lose to the Bears at any point, it should be a fire over offense. <laughs> listen, that D coordinator walking in the gym this morning, listen, you better keep your eyes real low, buddy. <laughs> you better keep your eyes real low. You gave up 40 to the Bears? 40 to the Bears? Uh, All right, like, listen. <laughs> and what's worse is they could have had more. I don't know what's good with Darnell Moody, but listen, hey, hey, sure. hey, J- Justin Fields not my fantasy quarterback, but if he was, I'd be jumping through the screen at Darnell Moody. You stop running on another go route, you see what I do. You see, bro. you see what action I bro. take, bro. First play of the game, you give up on a deep ball, like it's listen. It, even even at a forty point game, it's stuff that can be fixed. But shout out to the Bears. Um, no shout out to the commanders, though. No, no shout out to the commanders. All I really wanted to touch on with Justin Fields because we we have spoken about him every every single week. Yep. So y'all know how we feel. We know he can play football. I will just piggyback on to brag about us. We said a couple things coming into the season and as the season has started. Let him go. Let him play football. Mm-hmm. The first three weeks, the first two weeks, they were was that fifth game? First three weeks, they were not doing that. They have started to do that. Two. Let him run some plays that he is comfortable with. Yeah. He looks more comfortable. He looks like he knows what he's looking at. He's getting to the line and he's looking confident. Every throw he looks like he wants to make. Yeah. Um, the interception that he had, he's, I think in the past two games, he's over 800, up close to seven, close to 800 yards, eight touchdowns, and one pick. The one pick he had to pretty much lose in the game against the Broncos was a miscommunication. So I don't even blame him. Yeah. It looked like he thought the uh, tight end was going to cross the defender's face and the tight end sat and it was right. supposed to be on the left shoulder. And it looks like it was just mis- miscommunication, not a bad throw. Exactly. So you can, I mean, you don't want to live with that because it's in the game, watch yeah. the game. But summer is just going to happen. Summer is just going to happen like that. So. It, he looks very comfortable. They're letting him run the ball. A misdirection quarterback power to the other. I yeah. love it. Like, I love what they're doing. I love everything that they're doing. And I like them force-feeding DJ Moore the ball. The people, Falcons fans laughing at him, saying he can only throw a completely pass if he's throwing it to DJ, DJ Moore. Don't you wish your quarterback could just complete pass? Like, bro, that was the most confusing thing for me. Like, man, Don't you wish he could complete a 20-yard pass? A 25-yard pass? It's quarterbacks that can't get that number one the ball right now. Drake London. Cop, it's, it's, it's QBs that can't get they can be the wide receiver the ball now. Like, what do you mean? He can only pass to DJ Moore. Duh. What? That, 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 see, that, though, there's definitely some criticism that I just like. Fuck it. Like, it's, like, it's, it's not even worth me trying to explain the difference to you, bro. Like, it's not. Especially because, like, how. I don't want to say how, you know, like, big lion, little lion football is, mm-hmm. but, like, the number one receiver on that team. Getting 150 targets. That number two may get 80. Like, it's not like he exactly. dropped back like, who's open? No, 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 no. They are dropping back to get him the ball. Yes, as they should be. Yeah. DJ Moore is one of the best receivers after the catch we have in the league. Fact. He is very yeah. lower body strong, amazing yeah. balance. Um, really, really good receiver, bro. Like, he, is, he is a really good receiver. What he did last night was no, like, was no normal shit. Like, that, was, that was some ridiculous yeah, shit. He was crying. So, on to week five. <laughs> 
just a preview of the show, we have top 10 teams coming up later on. Um, we will be talking about the Olympic uh, Dream Team and uh, us being right again, about everybody trying to play for the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and we will let you know who our, our fake contender is in the NFL. But let's preview some of these games first. We'll have to start with the 9-30 London game. Jags, Bills, a very good game, 22 Jags, 3-1 Bills. What are you expecting? Who do you have? Well, we'll do pick later. So what are you expecting? Yeah. So I think the, the Jags are going to really have to open it up. And I know it sounds counterintuitive against the number one pass defense in the league, which the Bills currently are. But I think they are they were making some strides with Calvin Ridley, making some strides with the overall offense. But you can see that there has been an adjustment on the entire team, top to bottom. When they incorporated Calvin Ridley really back, they made him a captain last week to try everyone kind of solidify their place. Mm-hmm. But they need to have the breakthrough game. Yeah. Whether they lose, whether they score 40, they're going to be out there. They're going to get there, and they're going to rip it around. Mm-hmm. They're going to throw it around the yard. Mm-hmm. So whether that works out, we'll see. Von Lewis is not playing. My biggest concern would be the other side of the ball. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So that, I would go there then. I, of course, offense, you need to score the ball. Yeah. Defensively, you got to figure out a way to contain 14. Yeah. Um, if you cannot contain him, you're going to lose this game because Stefan running free and open and being able to, and not even, let's say, we'll say 12 targets, 8 catches, yeah. those games, everything else is open because now you're scrambling to find Stefan at the end of the game or in the second quarter when you realize he's going to go off. You're scrambling to yeah. find him. So now Gabe Davis, big target as well. When he now, has 8 catches in the third quarter, you're like, man, we should change something. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and now your whole defense is messed up because you're changing. So coming into. Coming into this week, I hope they already have a plan for Stefan. Yeah. Secondly, I know everybody says this way easier said than done. They have to keep Josh Allen in the pocket. Right. They cannot let him extend plays. They cannot let him run for first downs. That is going to like dis- just feel disheartening for your defense. And lastly, and this is the blueprint for them the past few years. Stop the run. Yeah. If you can make Josh Allen drop back 40 times, 42 times, you're happy with that. Yeah. If Josh Allen goes 35 for 42, no picks, 375 yards, you just got to realize you're playing one of the five best players in football. Yeah. Like, that's just on, – on days, Josh Allen is one of the three, five best players in football. So, that's about like it. he was last week. So, if he's having one of those Miami Dolphins games, then you just got to live with it and try to, like you said, air it out on the offense end and try to match them and go play for poor last one wins type game. But – I think they have the defense to – they have some fast linebackers. Yeah. Their secondary isn't amazing, but they have some fast linebackers. They have it, and they have some uh, quick D linemen. I think they can keep Josh Allen in the pocket, and as long as they can keep him in the pocket and contain the run, <laughs> I love Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. I love Trevor Lawrence. Although, like you said, they do have the number one pass defense. Prayers up to uh, Trevor, uh, Trey, Trey White. Trey White man. Prayers up to him. I, that, that, hurt. That, hurt, that, hurt, yeah. that broke my heart for real. But they're missing Poyer and they're missing Trey this week. So I expect that secondary to take a dip after that. Yeah. And so I do expect this to be a high-scoring affair, especially a, a game like this where you're you're really trying to give the uh, international fans a show. I expect this to be a high-scoring right. game. But, yeah, the Jags key to win. you got to keep Josh Allen in that pocket and stop the run. Those will be my two keys. Yep. So – Moving on, uh, Texans Falcons. This is a really funny game because it feels like a trap game, bro. Uh, the Texans rookie quarterback. You know what the Falcons have the best running back, the second best running back in football right now. Yeah. Um, but arguably the worst quarterback in football, which is a terrible, uh, terrible recipe. And the Falcons do have a decent pass defense. Um, some people say it's a bit overrated, but I like Akuda coming back. I like Jesse Bates. I like AJ Terrell. I, I like what they're. I like what they're doing. Right. So. This will be the question for this. Okay. Give a message to the Falcons fans. The Chrysler looks a lot like that Phantom. Until the Phantom pull up. Classic shit, bro. Yeah. Classic, classic <laughs> right there. You have a really you have a young QB. Mm-hmm. And the difference between a young great QB and a young QB is hard to tell at first. Because mm-hmm. even young great QB stuff. Even yeah. young great QBs lose. We scored nine points against Lamar in week one. <laughs> Ravens barely Ravens beat them by 14. Mm-hmm. The back then we were like, man, I can't believe they almost lost. Yeah. Right now, that's a good W. Yes. <laughs> because what he's gonna walk in there and do, you this will be the game that sets it. This will be the game that sets it. Because what Stroud is, is what you pick top five. He is he is one of those players. Day one, he might be a top. He may be a top ten QB already right now. We're talking about him. It's, 
Right now, he may be a top 10 QB already, and he's going to show he'll have to against a really great defense. But I think the Texans, you know, are going to – they are they, – what we have seen early in the year is, is he, they are not gunshot. They are not worried. Don't they are not scared. They are – listen, they, yeah, they don't care who is on defense. They don't care if he's a rookie. We're going to throw this ball. We're going to we gonna sling it around. <laughs> let, let's, see, let's see if he nice. Let's see if y'all can stop him. And the Texans have some really good wide receivers. I uh, we after last show we talked about um, we talked about Tank Dell. I want to shout out Nico Collins. That's why I forgot Nico Collins. Their other really good young wide receiver. They got some talent in in, in Houston, but I think that would be the message. Okay. Yeah. So before I continue, I want to give you a credit because uh, before the season started, you asked me where would Caleb rank, be ranked in the top 15, 20 quarterbacks, and I looked at you like you were crazy. Like that. Um, yeah, what I'm saying this week, I'll tell you. Look, he might be the best quarterback. Shayla <laughs> wouldn't be the best quarterback in a couple of divisions. Like, 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 can I, bro, you can talk Caleb in the NFC South. Oh, right. Right. You gonna tell me he's not better than Baker Mayfield right now? Yo, uh, come on, bro. So do you tell you tell me if the F the Falcons were like we signed Caleb Williams today? <laughs> like niggas would be up and on. Niggas rejoice. Yeah, they, the rest of the league would be up and on. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna play something. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and by the way, yes, I am serious. Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback in the NFC South right now. Shout out to Derek Carr, too. Shout out to Derek Carr. Shout out to Derek Carr. For single handedly ruining my Did I not tell you the same thing? What what Derek Carr has done to Chris Olave? I know what Derek Carr is. Yeah. I've seen this movie before. Who is he? Tell him again. Tell him again. Can we be be real life? Listen, Robert said we don't know football. I really went back. We ain't been wrong on some shit. You don't wrong. We do not be wrong, bro. If you know, and Roby knows we know football. He's the one. Roby be asking me football. <laughs> Don't disrespect me over again, bro. <laughs> Shut up, bro. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my message to the Falcons is in every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. It's a silver lining, baby. Listen, I'm going to say this in the, your first in this reaction, but let's just stop it. It's going to be, no, we don't want that. Yeah. But you do. 42 to 3. Yeah. 42 to 3, can't get a pass across the 50. Desmond Ritter is no longer the quarterback for the rest of the season. Oh, and, and tell and Heineke he takes snaps. That's before. what you need. You yeah. need you need it to be a definite. Okay, he can't be our quarterback going forward, and we have a team good enough to win. Right. Actually, let me let me rephrase that. You want a forty-two to seventeen game. Yeah. You want behind Bijan be, <laughs> behind to break a crazy run, a crazy sixty-yard run, or catch a swing pass, take a sixty-yard score, and you want Drake London or Kyle Pitts to take a slant. And break some tackles and get up the field and show you got some playmakers. Right. And this quarterback just can't move the field. You want him towards the end of the game, and you want this game to never ever look like y'all are going to win. So we can make the change this week. Yo, going for it. He can't be our quarterback. We started off two and two. I mean, we started off two and zero. That was the worst thing possible for us. It would they would start. They were zero four right now. They would be looking to make a switch. The good news is, you lose this week two and three. Your division sucks. You might be able to still make the playoffs and Taylor Honey can come in and make some make an impact. Yeah. I think he can have a bigger impact on the game than than Desmond Ritter will. And I think this week you will see that. Um I do have the Texas winning that game, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um so Raven Steelers. <laughs> and I'll start, I'll do the message for this week. Okay. <laughs> One more week, Kenny Pickett. <laughs> One more week. <laughs> Cause y'all are going to lose this game. Yeah. And hopefully, if Ravens come and take care of business, you guys lose this game pretty badly, and Matt Canada will be out of there, yeah. and your offense can get the re- of the reworking it needs. Yeah. Um, do you? What are you? What are you looking for from the Ravens? But we, the Steelers, yeah, we know what it's going. On. What are you looking for with the Ravens? Because they are playing a tough defense. Shout, out, shout out to the QB school. Um, I'll steal a phrase from them: make easy look easy. Big thing in sports. Make easy look easy. Great teams win games they're supposed to. You need to win this game. It's a division game. Quarterback's not an NFL player. You got to take your easy wins where you get them. You have to win this game. Right now, Lamar is, I think, second in completion percentage. The offenses look great. Like we said, every single week, it'll take another step, take another step, get a little better. And that's what we've seen. Um, (laughs) If I had a message just for the Ravens, uh, well, another message, let's keep everybody healthy. (laughs) 
Facts, bro. Facts. Yeah. Health is wealth, dog. That's yeah. the Health, Health is wealth. Is wealth <laughs> Damn, dog. Ask Steve Jobs, man. Um, hopefully Odell can come back this week. I'm not sure. Hopefully Odell and Bateman can come back this week. Um, but real quick on the Ravens offense, because I've read, I watched every snap of that offense this year so far, and they look better every game. Every game. Lamar looks comfortable every game. The running game, I don't know who is in charge of their running game coordination, Yeah, but dude. They seem like every time they run the ball, they get four yards, four five yeah. yards. It is amazing. So those those are my two keys for the Ravens. Continue to grow and build your offense, and like you said, help as well. Man, stay healthy. Yeah. So, Giants, Dolphins. The only question I have to you is over or under eighty five points for the Dolphins. <laughs> so <laughs> we have. Uh, I want to shout out to. Uh, I want to shout out to Dan. We'll be here behind the curtain one more time. Dan put a, a whiteboard behind the camera so like we keep tracking topics. But like, I'm reading them as we're going. Like I'm trying not to peek ahead. But I see the Giants and Dolphins in that song. But you had a bad day. <laughs> it is going to be a very bad day for the Giants. <laughs> okay, on one side you cut. Okay, so what's, what's the question? Let me make sure I, I get the question. Uh, the question is oh, over or under uh, 50 eight. points. I said 85 versus we'll go 50 though, because I'm not joking about 50. I'm gonna go over. <laughs> I'm gonna go over. I think the Dolphins offense might score 49. But that defense is gonna take a couple off of Dale Dose. You're coming off of playing Josh Allen, you know, the Dolphins, you got Vic Vangio at coordinator, great defensive coordinator. And what do great defensive coordinators do? They rip apart back QBs. They rip apart. Limited quarterbacks, which Daniel Jones is. Hope safe from sits out this one too. Hope you wake up some Please, sort. Please. Don't play. No. Remember, they don't need you out there. They no. don't need to pay you. They suck. Shout out to all the don't pay QB uh, quarter uh, running back guys. Like he will look. I bet he will look real nice if he yeah. falls back there taking twenty five. <laughs> Yo, if he was at the ball, I'm not that I'm telling you. Uh, but man, you had a bad day. <laughs> so <laughs> my message to the Giants is blame the Bills. <laughs> because they are gonna smash on you. Oh my they're mad. Yeah, and they should be because they got embarrassed last week. They didn't come prepared. They didn't come focused. Yep. This week they will come prepared. Yeah, and they will come focused. Mm-hmm. And this game will be over by the end of the halftime. By the end of halftime, this game is over. Yeah. So Mike White might take some snaps today. Like, yeah, it might. Get, it might get that. It's gonna get ugly. Yeah. So. Actually, real, real quick, let's get on the Dolphins real quick. What did you feel? How did you feel about Tua addressing the media and letting people in the media know, like, no, nah, we weren't focused, and people in this locker room were not focused, and they thought we were just gonna walk in here and win because we were playing. I like it. I, I like it. I like I it. it because you know, especially a, a guy in Tua's position, like normally, you know, the the armchair quarterbacks or the or the Twitter quarterback, you know, the leader guys want you to. You know, slam the locker room doors, get in fit every one of the 53 guys' faces like Brady would. Well, Brady was on long term contracts that were guaranteed. Two was a free agent at the end of the summer. I'm not listening to that. You know, he's not in the position right now to be running around telling people what's going to happen mm-hmm. with his future up in the air. Um, but it, he is right. It is a wake up call. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, you know, y'all lost. You know, right, right, <laughs> you right. y'all think it's lost. Right. You know, because it, 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 nobody knows better than the players on that team who locked in and who not. Facts. That's the thing. Facts. So I, I, to piggyback, yes, I agree. I think, <coughs> I think this is better to happen now than we did. Mm-hmm. You say it now. Yeah. You saw what happened. You saw we're not. We may not be the best team in our division right now. So shut up. Yeah. Everybody get back to practice. Let's start focusing. Let's let's start doing what got us to that three and zero record. Yeah, and, and that's what when be. you score seventy, it's natural. It's it's natural. You the, score seventy, <laughs> the pendulum's gonna swing. The pendulum, <laughs> like there's players on that Dolphins team that, that like this is their first year. Like they don't know losing. They don't know how hard it is to win in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You're in the NFL because you've been scoring seventy on everyone your whole life. Like this is just what <laughs> you're shit, to, like, shit. And like uh, that, I had to tell my mom that like they're in the NFL because they were superstars. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's no role players making it all the way here. It's a, you had to be a star at some point. Go read Derek Henry High School. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I swear, listen. That's one of my favorite things. Like, look, look, like on your on your football team, 
just look at a random guy's YouTube highlights and look how amazing he looks before he gets to the league. Like, it's just ridiculous. They say they say that they have the day like during training camp. Yeah. Or, or, or like maybe it's an everyday thing where they'll just go back and go to the skills positions and they'll just pull up their uh, yeah. high school highlights and just laugh. And like yeah. how much better they are than everybody. It's ridiculous. Because it's it seriously looks yeah. stupid. It looks stupid. So uh, quick note. I, I wanna I wanna give some insight because for those of you who don't know, I did play uh high varsity in uh basketball and football um for four years. So I've seen some elite athletes. Um a couple of people that I've played are in the NFL right now. One of those players that did not make the NFL but went to Georgetown to play running back, um, I don't even know his name. He went to the school called Covenant. We played them. He got the ball 10 times and scored five touchdowns. <laughs> like, like, do you know how crazy that is? I mean, like, he wouldn't fall. <laughs> like, like, we had people running through. <sighs> yeah. Boom, like, Dropping off like five. If you don't know me, yeah, I know I look big. I know I look tough. I don't like to tackle. Yeah, I can run all over the field. I'm not tackling nobody. So that wasn't my specialty. I just got out the way. I, yeah. you, a nigga like me know how to get bucked. Like, right, listen, I know how to act like I'm getting bucked. Even, even when I was, <laughs> listen, I'm a big dude. So I was always in the trenches. It was just something about me, you know, throwing my head at people that I just didn't. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I was hard right. tackling at DT for real. Like, <laughs> I was reaching for the ball. <laughs> Coach, I was trying to. Yeah, what yeah, you yeah, mean? I was trying to get a straight. But uh, just to just to just to grab that, like, <laughs> you remember the first time you saw like, oh yeah, he'll be a pro, <laughs> like around some regular niggas. Like it is the scariest thing you've ever seen. Like we, like when Jalen Brown played Newton, like you, re- it, it, it was like, oh, that is what an NBA player looks like. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> So me and my dad used to go like one of our things we used to do is every March we would go to the Gwinnett Energy Arena and watch all the state championships from four A five A. I think three 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 A four A five A. We would watch all the championships games, boys and girls. Duh. You saw the difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saw the difference. I don't know if you remember um uh Shaq. He went yeah, to Milton. Shaq. Yeah. He went to Milton and he jumped out the gent. Yeah. Dog, I went and watched him in the state championship, and it was just like, you know how Tyreek Hill just be running past people, and it's yeah. just be like, they're supposed to catch him, but they can't. It was one of those, like, galloping down the court. <laughs> Boom! Like, like, had the whole arena run to him. Um, and these are NBA players. These are just freak athletes. Right. Um, I don't know if I actually saw, like, an NBA player. I never saw Jalen Brown in person. Yeah. Of course, I've seen the uh, ball is life and all the mixtape. Right. But in person, I think the one I saw um, was Shaq. He was supposed to go to the league. Mufar Udofia, um, who was a point guard at Miller Grove. He was one of the top ranked point guards at ESPN. And this is back when point guards played point guards, and I yeah. wanted to be a point guard. And he was walking in 17 14, yeah. 17 15, like in high school, eight man yeah. quarters, like just cooking shit. So, yeah, I've seen some elite, elite athletes in my day. And then the last one is somebody I played against in basketball. Um, his name is Quintavia Cephas. He actually plays receiver right now for the Lions. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is basketball. Right. It ain't even his sport. Bro, he caught the ball in the mid post. This thing is 15 years old. Yeah. He caught the ball in the mid post. Reverse pivoted, jab, jab, one dribble. Woo, woo, foul, and one. Yeah. <laughs> like different. <laughs> like it's seven minutes left. Like <laughs> the game started. Like the game just started. Chill. What are you doing? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is probably one of our first OA conversations. They put this video on Twitter of like these 12 year olds who. And, I, and they were like, man, these kids are so much better. I was like, these niggas trash. Like, <laughs> like, like, but like, I knew Dale seventh grade. Dale smacking backboard in seventh grade, like on late, like smacking backboard when he was finished. Like, I'm fine. We like, no, we have seen some crazy, especially because we live in the south. I will say that because I know, your perspective. bro. Yeah, because I be talking to people like, like up north, like I have friends in Connecticut, friends in New York, and like the way their high school sports. Compared to like the South, mm-hmm. and I don't want to call Texas the South just because like in Midwest mm-hmm. and South, but look, just to throw Texas in there, it's so different. It's it's, it's, it's so rude. different. Bro. It's like, crazy. Like I know funny shit, and none of these people put in the work to go, so they don't deserve to be at this point. But I could probably rattle about fifteen niggas are coming to that shit once in the NFL or NBA. 
like 15 times. You couldn't have told me. Shout out to Angel Hips. You couldn't have told me. I thought Angel was the one. Bro, I thought Angel was the one. You couldn't have told me. No doubt. No doubt. You couldn't have told me D'Angelo wasn't going to the league, bro. But it's some kids like Ashton, Hagens, uh, Isaiah yeah. Miller did make it. Both of them did make it to the league. Yeah. They're both on G League teams right now. Um, JD Note, yeah. uh, Keo, who I thought had potential like that. Right. Um, um, Devon Miller. Um, it's some. It's just some. It's some names I could keep going. It's been like thirty. I don't know why I'm naming too. people. People watching from New York, like who the fuck is yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> but but no, we had yeah. some freaks in Newton County. Shout out to the COP man. Yeah, uh, but that was a great intervention. I'm glad y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, so upset at work. This is my first upset at work team this week. Um, Eagles versus Rams. Two and two Rams. Four and zero Eagles. Cooper Cup is back. Mr. Triple Crime is back. Yep. Right next to Puka, who seems like maybe Sean is just way smarter than people are giving credit for. Yeah. Like maybe he's even smarter than we thought he was because he looks like Cooper Cup. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he looks just like Cooper Cup. Yeah. Um, so I think this offense is going to take another leap. The weakest part of the Eagles' defense is their secondary. Yep. The the Eagles' offense has not looked great. Thanks. A pass rush is something that Aaron Donald himself can generate mm -hmm. with five people blocking him. Yep. So I think this is a trap game for the Eagles. Um, this one I'm going to ask, what do the Rams need to do to upset the Eagles? I want Aaron Donald to stop the touch push. You think again? Low key, listen. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. If anybody could, if anybody, if anybody, this is the test for me. This is what the NFL. Test. This is what the NFL should put on. If Aaron Donald can't stop that the, sneak, the, we'll think about it. Yeah, well, let's come back to it. So, because I want Aaron Donald to give it his all to try to do that sneak. Like if they do the sneak, call time. I put Aaron Donald in the team. Like I want everyone set and locked in to see it. But uh, like realistic expectations, I I want to see the I really want to see the Eagles defense stop the Rams, and not only just the the problems in the secondary that you mentioned, but the Rams are a very well rounded offense right now with the running back scoring touchdowns, Puka moving you know coming back and having Cooper Cup all there. If Matthew Stafford had, like he has been doing all season can sling it around. I think this offense is gonna have success just because you know, and I don't, I don't want them to hate it, but like, like that's y'all be made for real. like, it, it's like coaching is very, very important in the NFL, and this is one of the best coaches in the NFL. I, I think you know they're gonna have success early, but I'm really interested to see the Eagles consistently try to get stops on the Rams that aren't fresh that that isn't um what's the dude name for BJ that's not uh, Jalen Carter just stopping the drive mm -hmm. like actual good coverage or scheme or something that shows improvement on the back end because right now the Eagles defense has gone from top to bottom of the best defense league to we have a really really good pass rush mm -hmm. and if our pass rush is really really good we can play a really good defense but we haven't seen it where the DBs are helping the D-line. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing the complimentary football that you used to. So right. that is what I would be looking for. Okay, so so the Rams, I want to say, I want to see the Rams throw the ball 45 Oh yeah. I don't want to bounce. I don't oh, yeah. want to bounce. Run the ball as you need to. Of course, you got to run the ball at some point. But <laughs> I went 45, 50 times, let Matt Stafford sneak it. First off, let me pause and say last week I watched them come back um, against the – not come back, but I watched them – uh, get tied and then lead the overtime drive, and I saw Matt Stafford limping. Matt Stafford took a real dog. Boy. Yeah, real, no, no Matt, Stafford, Matt Stafford, real dog. Denver. Run to Denver. Yeah, like, real shit, man. If he would have gotten got drafted to a great organization, we might be talking about him differently. Like, real shit. Oh, Matt Stafford's crazy. He's a he's right. a dog, bro. So I want to see that this week. I want to see the dog in you this week. 45, 50 attempts. I want this defense to have to prove they can stop you. Now, of course, if they come out and you can't complete pass in the first quarter, change everything. But <laughs> the game thing. plan, the game plan going into, we're going to air this thing out, and y'all going to have to stop us. If we got to go 42, 35, yeah. we're going to do that. I don't want this to be a game that is 13 to 17, 13 to 20, because you're not going to win that. You're not going to win a trenches game with the Eagles. That's what they do. That's the brand of football they play. Exactly. Make them have to air it out. Put them in uncomfortable positions. If you get the uh, coin toss, receive, go down the score, first possession. Yep. Put the pressure on them. Because the like 
that that's kind of what I'm saying. In, in them like that, put the pressure on them initially because we know what the Eagles do, we know what they are, but the Rams have to put some pressure on that secondary to really make them pay. Yeah, and I don't know the stats of Cooper Cup because the IR is different than just mm-hmm. coming back from injury. Like he could be one hundred percent coming back mm-hmm. as opposed to you know working his way back. Yeah. But if Cooper Cup is one hundred percent, I need twenty targets. Like make them cover you, make them stop, you. make them stop you. Stay aggressive. Put the ball in your best player's hands, which is Stafford, which is Cup. And and yeah, I, that's it. I'm, I I last I just I want to. I'm really excited to watch Cooper play. I, yo, I, I, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm excited to watch him play. Facts. Work. Yeah. Um, and my last. I don't even know if this is upset, <laughs> but whatever you want to call it, Bengals Cardinals. Um. Hey, look, Bengals. <laughs> this is kind of your playoff hopes right here. Like, yeah. in the crazy-ass way, like, this is kind of like your season right here. Yeah. Do you think the Cardinals can pull up upset? So, the Cardinals They're at home. So, the Cardinals are going to win. Okay. I don't, and I don't think it's going to be upset. Okay. From what we've seen, and, you know, salute to Joe Burrow, uh, you know, get right to Cavs, salute to Jamar, Jamar Chase, one of the best receivers in the league, um, T. Higgins, future Patriot, but <laughs> it's over. And... In a different year, in a different conference, this is a different conversation. But the teams that are in the AFC, you're already too far behind. And unless Joe is going to wake up with a healthy cap, I just don't see how they can make up the ground because this is the it's like the twilight zone. Like you get this is this is the result of your own choice. You're behind the eight ball because you did not want to be behind the eight ball. You didn't want to be zero and two. So you rushed Joe to play. And then you lost anyway. And now you can't sit him because you need him. But it's already too late. We're already in week five. It's only it's only 18 weeks. <laughs> it's only 18 weeks. So I think it's I think it's I think it's over for them. I think the Cardinals are better than people think. I think I think they're better coach than people think. Oh yeah. I think that's something people Oh yeah, Jonathan Gans, yeah. Definitely a good coach. And I think they play physical. Impressive football. Like, it's not like the Cardinals are getting bland every week. Mm-hmm. They've led in a lot of these games they've played, and the Bengals are the complete opposite. Even when they won, they looked off. So I think it's over for the Bengals. That would be my message. Pack for the summer. I will say this because everything he says, right? I, I, I agree. <clears throat> I Joe Burrow said he is healthier, he is as healthy, healthier than he's been the entire season. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that. Right. I think he just has to say that. I don't believe he is healthy. I think if you limp into the season, you're going to limp out of it. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Um, yeah. But the only thing I have to say isn't even about this game. Unless his name is Bill Belichick, or unless his name is Mike Tomlin, there should be no reason a defensive coach is hired as a head coach every year. I, yeah, it's I kind of mean, over. It's kind of I mean, over. With what we're watching with the Cardinals and Joshua Dobbs. Yeah. James Conner, no real number one receiver. Mm-hmm. They are competing and fighting in games. The only reason they are losing these games is because they do not have the talent. Mm-hmm. They just don't have the talent. That's but right. when you can go beat the Cowboys, who are one of the five best teams in football, you're doing something right. Right. They get Kyler Murray back, and they drop the receiver next year. Mm-hmm. Get some defensive players with that coach. They're going to be in contention with the NFC West next year. That's a fact. And I completely agree. I hate that, you know, because I'm a Patriots fan. I, you know, we grew up, the, the era of football that people idolize, we actually grew up in mm-hmm. Philly. Like those early, like the, like the 2005 through 2000, like, I'd say 12. That's mm-hmm. when Ray won his last mm-hmm. one. That era of hitting people, like that's the football we grew up in. Mm-hmm. That's the football we literally watched. That's why I don't so, want to play college football. That's a one thousand. My son will never touch football. But <laughs> you're never gonna touch me like that, Andrew. Who the fuck you think you're at? You think I'm a bitch? The fuck? So the the I don't want to say the extinction of a defensive cube court uh, like coach, but why? Like really, why? Like what are you, what are you doing? What? Especially right now, quarterbacks are so important. And another word I want to put on it for the average fan to see if you know if this helps you understand more. They're so expensive. They're the only position on the team you're paying forty percent of the team's salary for. So your coach has to 
to be something that's going to improve his value. The age of we're going to get a Peyton Manning and he's going to run the offense, and then we're going to get a Tony Dungy and he's going to run the defense, or we're going to get Bill Belichick and we're going to get Tom Brady, or we're going to combine uh, offensive uh, offensive genius at quarterback and a defensive coach. Those days are over because first of all, quarterbacks you know they aren't good enough to do that. You know it's not like Brady's and Peyton's running around, and like. The way the NFL is moving, you need a difference maker on, on, on Wednesday through Thursday because offenses are more creative than they've ever been. And Def- so are defense. And so are defense. And fat, the defenses are faster than they've ever been. Exactly. The way you used to be able to play football, you literally can't do it anymore because teams are too fast. Teams are too good. Teams are too fast. And the way you used to play will get you fired now. You're about to watch it in Pittsburgh, literally. And so these defensive coaches that, you know, what do you bring to the table? Defense, identity. Okay. Because the Lions coach averaged a 35 a game. He know. He's a defensive guy. He get it. He know, though. When he got the best offensive coordinator money to buy. Exactly. And that is the thing. If you're going to be a defensive coach. Go get the best offensive coordinator you can possibly find. And, and most Over importantly. Over if you have to. You got Kiko McCoy. That's, switch them out that's the biggest problem. Where the defensive coaches, like, we used to used to be able to lose a coordinator, sustain it. Right now, coordinators are so important. If you're already a defensive coach and you have a great coordinator and he goes, mm-hmm. you're resetting your offense. Exactly. And you're in a position to do stuff that you never that you stopped doing. We, like you were a coordinator before, yes. Mm-hmm. But you were not a head coach while you were a coordinator. And okay, so let's 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 humanize this for the people that don't necessarily watch football. Because I've I had some people tell me like they kind of try to come work from us. So imagine you are in history one on one, and you have the same teacher. You know exactly how they test. You know exactly the 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 types of tests they give. You know what day their quizzes are on, and right. you know you know everything about this teacher. And midway through the semester. Somebody comes in and changes everything. Right. Now you got to figure out a new way to study. Mm-hmm. You got to figure out a new way to take notes. Yeah. You got to figure out a new way to test. You got to time yourself differently on the test. Mm-hmm. That is what a quarterback is going through with an offensive coordinator change. He has to learn a new verbiage in the offseason. Yeah. He has to learn new route patterns in the offseason. Footwork. He has to learn new footwork in the offseason. Mm-hmm. He has to learn new timing in the offseason. He has to learn new pre-snap cover, pre-snap reads in the office, uh, off season. He has to know how to switch the line differently. In the These are all things he has to yeah. learn in six months. Yeah, he doesn't get a chance because nobody plays in preseason anymore. Nope. For the six months from let's say the offensive coordinator gets hired in March, from March until August, until September, he does not get a live game rep. So that's like a teacher comes in, switches everything, and don't give you a test until the finals. I got a great example because I actually I just did explain this. That's why it's so important to keep the offense coordinated. I actually did explain this to a very nice young lady who I was trying to explain why the Chiefs single out here bitterly. But a head coach is like a headshot. Mm-hmm. So there are things that are going to be in place no matter who else is running it because that headshot is there. Right. These are going to be the processes. Right. But for my food people out there, shout out to Bear, shout out Master Chef. Your coordinators are your sous chefs. They are the people that are going to run every little step you take before you get to the final product. So changing your coordinator is changing the sous chef, changing the menu to where everything that you had trained yourself to learn is no longer applicable. And the, 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 the reason I use this comparison is because in the restaurant industry and in football, for better or for worse, there's no mistakes. <laughs> yeah. When bullets are flying, and that's that's the term they use, what in-game reps, you're expected to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Even when things are not perfect around you. So even while you're learning the new menu, the new way to cook this food, the new way to serve it, the new way to prep it, the new way to communicate with the people around you how you were doing this, like you would on an NFL offense, it all still needs to be perfect around you. That is why we always say that life's not fair. Right. Like for people to play in the same system for nine years, life's not fair. Nah. For people who have five coordinators in six years, right. it's just not fair. Because you had to relearn how to make a sandwich six times. Like you know how to do this. 
You've been doing this your whole life, but now you need to relearn how to do it right now perfectly. To his standards and how to, he wants it. Exactly. Um, and this is, if you've been listening to the show the past, since the season started, you've heard us talk about the Ravens implementing a new offense and how they are starting to look better every week. It is because of what we're talking about now. Yep. It's so many things you're implementing. And then the last thing we haven't even mentioned, you don't get your whole playbook to like week 14, damn it. Yeah, week you're 12. Keep, you're still at it. You're adding. So like the Ravens are adding plays week by week, adding formations, adding motion, yep. adding different, adding playing with new per- personnel, so new timing, new rock rock, yep. rock trees. There are rock patterns. There are so <laughs> many things that go into a NFL offense and defense, of course. There are so yep. many things that just minor details that the average just listener fan you'll just never know about. And you'll wonder why offenses look terrible or look like they're mm-hmm. struggling. And everybody the first thing also why they get paid the most bucks is because you're gonna play the quarterback immediately. Nice. And a lot of times, bro, a lot of these times, it don't be the quarterback. Yep. That's Marie, that's a quarterback. <laughs> Justin Fields a couple weeks ago, not on him. Right. That's coordinator. Kenny Pickett, we don't know, don't Maybe. love Kenny Pickett, yeah. but I think Kenny Pickett is better than what he is showing, but we'll never know because Matt Cannon. Yeah. We don't know. We made that. Baker Mayfield, a couple minutes, a couple of years ago. Baker Mayfield took the, won 19 games, took the Browns to the playoffs. He switched coaches 95 times. Yep. And for two years, he was like, he couldn't play football. Now, he got a full offseason. He had he did have to do what we just went through and learn a new offense, learn a new termination, learn a new, uh, don't let you go to a new team. You got to learn new receivers and shit. Yeah. You got to adjust the heights and all of that. He had to do all of those things. But you saw, he's comfortable now. Yeah. He's an accurate passer. He's a, he makes quick decisions. And he doesn't turn the ball over. That was his thing in college. He never turned the ball over. So now he's having success. So it is really just... To wrap this uh, tangent up, it's really just about your coordinator and your quarterback's relationship. And that brings us back to the original point, which is why if you're not going to either hire the best offensive coordinator you can buy yeah. or hire offense, offensive, minded head, uh, offensive minded head coach. So that relationship between offensive coordinator and head coach and quarterback is as tight and as seamless as it yeah. can possibly be. Because if not, you're not going to win. You're not. Exactly. Look at where the NFL is going. Look at who has won the past few Super Bowls. Hey. Matt Stafford, Sean McVay, Andy Reid, Pat, Pat Mahomes, yep. and then before that, Brady. Facts. The, so, and just to underscore how correct you are, think about being Sean McVay compared to the defensive coaches now. And I know Sean McVay is a bad example, one of the best offensive minds we've ever seen. But Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniel, all these coaches – that are bred from this Shanahan tree, what you notice on these teams is they rarely hire outside. Right. These great offensive-minded teams, like the Rams, 49ers, uh, Dolphins, they are moving them up from mm-hmm. within because they are teaching them. They are able to improve what they have because they already know it. Right. You are hiring from outside. Yeah. So you have to try to bring that in. But you don't have that as your system. It's not something you can teach. It's not something you can make the standard for you. That uh, that is probably the biggest thing you see where defense goes struggle. Where, yeah, we were good, but uh, the coordinator left, right. <laughs> and the quarterback never looked the same. Shout out Dan Quinn in Atlanta. Right. It's just Simple. that's just not what we do. You go from having the number one offense across the board with you know good to great quarterback Matt Ryan. Shout out to you, an amazing receiver, but. Matt Ryan and Julio played together 10, 15 years. They didn't lead the league in offense every year. And go to the Super Bowl. No, no, no. They did one time. They had one one amazing year. Matt Schaub. And that's because Kyle Shanahan. Matt Schaub. I mean, I mean, and the biggest point is, and, and I, I did want to hit this at some point. We may do it next week. Like the don't pay running backs crowd. The don't pay QB crowd needs to speak up sometime soon. Because with Brock Purdy. Two like these quarterbacks that I was told was bad. Because we are old enough to remember when Tua was a bad football player. When Tua was, oh, yeah, we need to replace him. He's not good. When Brian Flores didn't believe in him, they were they, they were colluding to get Tom Brady to Miami. A brand new coordinator, oh, he's MVP candidate. Mm-hmm. Brock Brady, literally, last pick of the draft. Top five QB numbers. Jimmy G has played five, six, seven great years of football, went to most of won, won a Super Bowl, went to a Super Bowl, was a part of NFC Championship games, not a home run hitter. He just was close to Tom Brady, was close to Kyle Shanahan, and he just did his job. But he leaves that system, he's leading the league in picks, and he missed the game already. <laughs> it is a big difference between having one of these coordinators that's going to get you. Like, you're putting... 
a two hundred eighty million dollars. Like let's average because over next week is going to get get higher. You're putting two hundred eighty million dollars into this one position. We need to maximize this position as best we can because this is the most important one. Right, so, not only is it the most important, it's the hardest position in the entire world. Oh yes, facts. Oh yeah. Easy. So why are we, as you said, not investing everything we have to make right. this relationship perfect? Mm -hmm. That is what I think we'll start to see slowly go through. The right. NFL is slowing about tradition, and you know it's a, it's a boys' club, so it's going to take some time. But it'll it'll get there. Um, but yeah, that's an excellent tension. If you don't if you don't understand why quarterbacks are so tough. Um, we might do a whole like thirty minute episode on that. We should yeah. do a Patreon. Um, That's facts. Um, when well, I'm not gonna tell you when we go start a Patreon. Don't hear about that, Joe. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> uh, Jets Broncos. Yeah, we all lose. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I haven't been this excited to watch a bad football game in a while. Oh God, I'm gonna be glued into this boy, shit. Sean Payton. I'm gonna be so glued into this. And this is why it's so important that we ask. What would happen if you didn't say that? Because you got out of body about a team before the season. You said, oh, yeah, that was the worst coaching job I've ever seen. And, you know, we got to make the playoffs. But you didn't know how bad y'all really were yet. I hadn't gotten it real. You didn't see how bad Russ really is. Mm -hmm. Now, heck, he probably, he, he probably would have told you if you asked for real. But now, y'all are worse. Y'all are worse? Shit, at least, I, at least my team played defense. Right. At least my team played defense. Right. Y'all just got 70 for the Right. Man, don't you lose, Sean Payton. Don't you lose. To Zach Wilson? Yeah. To Zach Wilson. So Zach I'm rooting for the Jets this week. Oh, yeah. I'm rooting for Jets. I'm rooting for Zach Wilson to go for 330 three touchdowns. Jets. 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 Yes, sir. I am rooting for the Jets this weekend. I don't have too much to say about this game. I just want everybody to stay healthy. I want Zach Wilson to have the best game of his NFL career. And I want this defense to hold the Broncos to 12 points because I'm less than 13 points because I do think this Jets offense got some juice, got some momentum, and got some pride last week and confidence. And going into this week, they're playing a weak defense, a bad defense. On the flip side, Broncos defense will want to make a stand this week and will want to play with a lot of pride. And I think that we're in for a little chess match, but I think the Jets will come out on top. And I, and I, I'm rooting for Jets. Is that, is that I need sauce to get one. Um, uh, yes, I, I need sauce to get one. Yeah, we're off of Russ too. Yeah, uh, Chiefs Vikings. Um, and if you if you wonder why we talk bad about Russ, go listen to Marshawn's Lynch interview with Shannon Pashar. Shout out to um, that. Shout out to that. By the way, um, anytime someone anywhere speaks about Russell Wilson, they all say the same thing. Surprisingly, nobody likes this thing. Nobody ever. Like, they, they, the people swear it's just. Like, and what be killing me, yo? I I I did have this conversation with a woman like four or five months ago, complete underrated football. <laughs> Talking about Russell, she was like, I don't understand why people don't like him. I like think about this. He lost the Super Bowl. Like aside from anything else, you want to believe about Russell? Wilson, on his shoulder is a Super Bowl loss to Tom Brady. Like the people, the person everyone wants to be. That's a good enough reason right there. Like, you lost the Super Bowl by yourself. And listen, people people criticize the call. The call was not to throw interception. I guarantee it wasn't that. Thank you. Even if the call was to pass, it's not open. He's not open, my nigga. You took a step. He stepped into it. Like if it was like a new, new school RPO. Like if it was an RPO, I can get it. No, that is a design pass. Like you look, you watch Malcolm Butler, you watch the corner jam the, the, the player who's supposed to sit the paint. At that point, it should be a dead throw the ball through the back of the end zone. You have another oh, down. But you know, like, and, it's such a good reason not to like someone. And, and listening agree. And listening to PJ explain why they get up on makes so much more sense than I ever thought about. We're going like, four on four. Like, we were going four on four, and if we wanted to get to four of them, we had to pass the ball one time. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. That makes perfect sense. The, I mean, he was pretty much in his rush ball. Don't blame me. Like, I was just coaching. Like, I was doing the right thing. That, that's and, what and that philosophy, that, that oh, yeah, that he's one million percent correct. Every, ten times out of ten, you got to throw the ball at one million. You have to. Because, yeah. of, because of the time difference in, in what your timeout situation is. But that is my thing, bro. That is what I got from that SP Carroll interview was the call wasn't to throw the interception. <laughs> I did not get on the mic and tell this nigga to throw a pick. Like, that's not on me, bro. Like, yeah. that 1,000 first, like, that wasn't the play we drew up. Maybe we try Beast Mode first. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give you no blame because maybe, maybe you should try Beast Mode. Like me, nigga like me would have ran. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> we just wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> right. If he didn't get the first one, get right back to hey, the line. Same place. 
and until we get to the same place all the time. And okay, hurry it up. But but Chiefs Vikings, I don't I, I don't want to stay on this too long. Um, but I want to ask you a question to let you and get your opinion. Is are the Chiefs missing Eric right now? Eric Bien. I thought so because I saw they dressed nine receivers. So dress like they, they, like, for the people like the for the casual football fans, it's fifty three active players on the team. So one fifth of them were wide receivers, and that is completely outside the norm. I think right now that right now they're trying to figure out who's going to be the, who's who's going to be on the field basically. Right. Um, aside from that, I thought they looked okay. I don't. I'll never worry about their offense Maybe. at all. With even if they didn't have Patrick Mahomes, they have Andy Reid, who's an offensive genius. So, mm. but I don't think they're missing EB too much. I think they're just in a position that other teams aren't in. Where right. oh yeah, we don't have any wide receivers out. I think if we they had a clear cut number one receiver, clear cut yeah. number two receiver, shit would have been. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Sure. For sure. Travis missed a few games. Probably didn't come back 100 right. healthy. It's getting healthier. Um. And I do think they're missing him a little bit, though. I, do, I will say, I think they're missing him a little yeah. bit because I think it's a lot of stress off Andy Reid's shoulder having your guy next to you, yeah. your guy that you've proven with uh, went to work. And, and, and Eric Bain would be kind of a you know, asshole. So and, like, and you be having that. a guy like that. You need that. Yeah, you need that, especially when you're Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a playful coach. Like, right. He be he the type that gets you right. Mm-hmm. He just he know exactly. like, we'll leave it like that. Exactly. Like, he gets you right for real. Exactly. So I think they may be missing like the disciplinary side of him. Mm-hmm. Any chance of the fight can beat them though? No chance. Okay. Kirk Cousins will have to be playing that music early. Uh, I agree. Shout out to them in the Texas Rangers game that went to the game. Um, didn't ask for any tickets. Yeah. Um, the whole time they were there, did not ask for free fam, tickets. Fam, dude, you should have seen. Oh, my gosh. You should see my face. I don't know. Like, oh, he didn't ask for tickets. Do you know how much money Kirk Cousins make? I wouldn't have given the nigga a ticket. You don't buy a seat, Kirk. What are you talking? Like, that would, t- that would tweak me. If anything, I would have thought who brought the tickets. But, hey, nigga, if you don't buy a box. Bro, if you, if you don't buy a box. Game of the week. 
been waiting on this one. Oh, this yeah. one of my, well, this one of my like key marquee matchups of the year. This one, oh, yeah, games of the year conference. conference, yeah, games of the year type shit. So Sunday night, everybody's healthy. 49ers, Cowboys, three and one versus four and no. Um, two NFC powerhouses, two of the three best teams in the NFC. Um, we got Brock, Brock Court, Brock, sorry, <laughs> Brock Purdy. Uh, st- statistically, is a top five quarterback. Is he really? Probably not. But statistically, he is. Cowboys, their defense looks like the best defense in football. They have lost Trayvon Diggs, but they still look amazing. It's going to be very hard to run and throw the ball on them. And Michael Parsons, if anybody could, if there was a like non-quarterback MVP award, he would be second in voting right now behind Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. So let's let's attack this separately. You go you go 49ers, I'll go Cowboys. What do the 49ers need to do to win this game? They need to they need to so they need to keep being the big brother in this rivalry. Mm-hmm. We need to keep beating him up. It's not enough that we win. It's not enough that we you know we have control of the game. We need you niggas to know. And the last couple times, <laughs> I was trying to think of my answer, and I was like, the 49ers have lost the past two games. I, mean, I was like, the 49ers have won the past two games. Why are the Cowboys? I was like, oh, I asked about the 49ers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot that question as soon as I said it. <laughs> like, I need y'all to, like, like you know, you, you play fight with your brother, I need mean, rib shots. Like, show that nigga the difference. You're not grown yet. Mm-hmm. You're not grown. Like, what y'all think y'all are? Y'all think y'all are the best defensive league? This is the best defensive league. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think your office nice. This office nice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like this is what we do for real. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So, yeah, I, I agree with that because the Forty ers was. I mean, the, what I was gonna say for the Cowboys is kind of to prevent the Forty ers from doing that. Is and you gotta stop the run. Yep. Stop the run. Mm-hmm. Make Mark Purdy drop back thirty five times and show you something. Yeah. Yeah. Guard the body shot. Now it's gonna be hard because yep. you haven't been able to do it. They knocked you out of the playoffs two years in a row. It's gonna be real hard. You haven't been able to stop the run. Actually, nobody has. So, so it's going to be tough. But if you can stop the run and force Brock Purdy to win the game instead of manage the game, yeah. I think you can beat them. Because, and or off, offensively, you have to establish the run. Because yeah. I don't think this is a defense that you want that dropping back 35 times, 40 times against. So you need to establish the run, and on the flip side, you need to stop the run. Yeah. And avoid the big brother relationship because as much, as much noise – and, and 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 outside noise that comes in for the Cowboys, you losing three, four games in a row to the 49ers and then having to play them in the playoffs, it's going to be worse than possible for you. Yeah. So this is a really important game for the Cowboys, way more than the 49ers, because the 49ers, if they lose to the Cowboys, you're like, man, who's the Cowboys? Yeah. This place. The Cowboys lose to the 49ers. Brock Purdy go for 300, three touchdowns, Christian Graffin run all over the field, and they contain Michael Parsons. It's going to be like, shit, Mike. Like, what so, can we do? So we, I don't think we'll name the episode this, but – this segment should be called Dak Don't Do It. <laughs> because this is the one game. We are anti-quarterback playing scared. Mm-hmm. We don't ever want quarterback to double think, to, you know, misread or question, you know. This is the one week, fam. If you if you go the rest of the season throwing a pick every other game, okay, this can't be the game. You throw two picks. This can't be the game where you're going to turn the ball over two or three times early in the game or even late when the game is important. Because, like you said, the mental hurdle that you will have to get over a couple of times, if they beat you three times in a row and the last two times is because you hit them in the chest with two mm-hmm. passes mm-hmm. because their defense is just too good, I think it's just a lot to overcome, especially when you're all – like you said, you're all ready to go. Exactly. Exactly. So – that leads us into uh, the wrapping up the show. We can't wrap up the show without doing our top 10 teams, as we promised. Yep. So uh, we got 10 teams, uh, the top 10 teams. It's, it's a little bit easier to do right now, honestly, than the, the past years. Um, I kind of think the top six, seven teams are kind of undebatable at this point, um, which is very rare for an NFL season. But I will go first. Uh, yep. At 10, I'll go through these quickly, and I'll, I'll kind of explain after. So at 10, Rams. Love what they're doing. Love Matt Stafford. At number nine, I have the Chargers. At number eight, I have the Seahawks. Number seven, I have the Lions. Both of those can be switched. Don't care. Um, at six, I have the Kansas City Chiefs right now only because I'm worried about the receiving for right now. Um, the Cowboys are at five. At four, I have the Miami Dolphins. Three, the Eagles. 
Two, the best team in the AFC, in my opinion, right now, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And one, I can't move the 49ers if they stop dominating everybody. So right now, I still think the 49ers are the best team in football. I like it. I, I like it a lot. So 10 for me, I'm going to stick with Seattle. Okay. Nine, I'll have the Rams. Mm -hmm. I think I'll be missing somebody from your list. I can't remember who it is. Uh, let me look for some other. The Chargers, probably. The Chargers, yeah. I'll write the Chargers in my top 10. But eight, I'm going to. This one we're gonna have the Ravens. Mm -hmm. I think the Ravens. This is probably the lowest they'll be for a super long time. You forgot the reason on your list. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go Ravens. This is the lowest they'll be for a long time. Not healthy. Still learning the offense. Still an amazing team though. Seven. This is where the Lions are gonna fall for me. Six. I'm gonna go Philly. I don't really like what we've seen from Philly right now. I, I don't like what they see on the back end. All that. Uh, five. This is where it gets a lot easier. This is where I'm going to go Dallas. Four, I'm gonna go. I'm. This is where Dolphins are. Miami, three Chiefs, two Bills, one Niners. Okay, so I am going to redo my top ten. <laughs> of course, I was reading. I was listening. I was like, wait. <laughs> my bad. Ten Chargers. Uh, nine Seahawks. Seven. Uh, not eight. Ten Chargers. Nine Seahawks. Eight Lions. Seven Chiefs. Six Ravens, five Cowboys, four Dolphins, three Eagles, two best team in the AFC, the Bills, and number one, the 49ers, best team in football. Um, so very similar. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure we yeah. said the same teams. Based, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it's really hard. Only team on the outside of the Chargers, and I guess that's where we'll start, is why what is preventing you from putting um per, keeping putting the Chargers in the top ten? So it's a combination of Confusion with Herbert, but like let's say twenty percent confusion with Herbert, and the other eighty percent, I know what you are, Brandon Staley. Right, and that's okay. That's for me. You're a defensive coordinator. That's my answer, Brandon Staley. You're Brandon a defensive coordinator. Brandon Staley. You're not a head coach. Um, and so that leads us into my next question. <laughs> so every year there are NFL teams that we know are fake contenders. Last year it was the Vikings at thirteen and zero. The year before that, I think the Steelers started with like ten and zero or something. Yeah, worst ten and zero team. Yeah. Knew, knew what it was from the jump. Yep. This year, who was your fakest contender? <sighs> that was just number two on my list, but definitely the Buffalo Bills. Shout out to the Buffalo Bills. Shout out to my dad, big Bills fan. Shout out to Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen. But I'm a firm believer in when people show you who they are, you got to believe them. Okay. And Josh Allen, and listen, it's okay. been the last good three weeks. But I, I saw who you was week one, uh -huh. and I've seen you do that before. And your entire career mm -hmm. has been up, down, mm -hmm. up, and down. And for that reason, I think in the I think in this NFL where it, only one team gets a buy, of the how many teams make the playoffs? Eight seven, teams, seven, seven teams, make, seven teams make the playoffs. Six of those teams are gonna have to win three games at least to get to the Super Bowl. I don't think you can get three to four great decision making games out of Josh Allen. And I think that is the 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 pie like you're waiting to step on the rake. The pie is gonna hit you in your face where he's just gonna do something that you can't do. Or he's gonna play a certain way that you can't play for one of those games. And I think that is what you've seen with Josh Allen. Three or four games, you gonna get a stinker. Okay. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> My answer to this question is sorry, Robbie, the charges. Oh yeah. Uh, we just mentioned Brandon Staley. I don't trust Brandon Staley. Mm -hmm. I don't trust the defense. I don't think they have any any um, schematically. I think they're bad defensively. I think they have the players, but schematically they are bad defensively. And I think they're poorly coached. And that goes for clock management. And I think that is super important come yeah. playoff time. Is how you manage the clock. I think Brandon Staley is awful at it. Um, they would be better FaceTiming and should let him manage your clock. Okay. If you play issue Madden, oh, yeah. he might be the best clock manager I've ever played. Yeah. So, that's a perfect for, yeah. for sure. So, I want to say RP Mike Williams, too. Well, not oh, yes. okay. RP oh, Mike not, Williams, not, me. Yes, not RP Mike Williams, Williams, me. For sure. There we go. Um, but yeah, so the fakest contender I have right now would yeah. be the Chargers. Everybody else, I think, is a real contender. You kind of convinced me with the Bills and the Josh Allen being inconsistent, but I was going to give him to week eight before yeah. I say anything. Um, and then the last thing for the day. 
We were right again. Yeah. Um, we had to play like ourselves. Bro, like, we, we need one. We need one. Everybody um, has, everybody in the NBA that is important has decided to play before the Olympics this year. They have to start. Um, Joel and B. Steph. Uh, Steph, LeBron, and AD, Booker. So, KD. All, Cam, have all Cam said. said that he would have a spot, which I found interesting. Um, if Embiid and AD are playing, Bam's not. I um, they said he's on the twelve man roster. He got a spot, and I started counting names. I was like, "Well, that's a lot of people I get to." I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's good because you don't need three bigs. You don't need three bigs. You don't need three bigs. Like, yeah. like you don't need the three bigs. Go, so, play, go play for Nigeria, you fraud. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let's so out of bio, bro. Like, so let's have some fun. <laughs> His name is Bam. Like, they're like. Don't play for you. Like, like, say what it be, bro. Get out of here. I don't think it be should be playing, bro. Yeah, I don't think but, so either. But I, I'll let it go. Whatever, dog. Whatever, bro. Um, so. <laughs> play the camera. Like, you, don't get, you don't get no stain playing for USA. <laughs> like, MB, you're not getting no stain for that. <laughs> These homegrown USA, like, team, like Tatum, all them. Yeah, this is for you. MB, come on. Like, <laughs> that's not dick, right? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> To wrap the show up, uh, let's close it out with some fun. We, I know that football series is a lot of talking, but y'all, we love football. Y'all love football. Yeah, so it's a good thing. Um, we'll take it to basketball, end it with basketball. And give me your dream Olympic 12 man roster okay. for next year's Olympics. Okay. I will count them out for you so you can lose track. Okay. And so we'll go turn five for person. Uh, person. And, and, and I want to preface this by saying y'all sent out Bobby Porter. Porters last year. So who I pick, I don't want you in this in the comments. <laughs> but okay, starting, of course, we're gonna go Steph, Book. I got Braun starting, of course. A D. And then B's gonna be there. <laughs> but coming off the bench, six men, I swear to God, hand in oh right here. Hand on um, the button. Um, I don't know. It just stopped recording. I don't know when, okay. so I'm gonna just take it back up when Mike announces that we're doing this. I bet, just in case. Better for him. And I might have to cut it out there. Better for better. We were just in USA last year. I'm pretty sure I just pressed pause on accident, and that's what happened. So I need to leave this. Um, I may have to like chop it up, but it's gonna be alright. Okay, for better. Um, all right, so. To wrap up the show today, um, a fun little segment again. We write the Olympic dream lineup. I mean, the dream team. We're getting the dream team basically. This yeah. year, it's Olympics 2024. So the last question of the day, last topic of the day, is we're going to give you our dream Olympic team. All right. So Ish, go first. So I'm. So I'm actually. So I'm preface this by saying that we sent out Josh Hart. And Bobby Porter's and all threes. So the niggas I got on my bench, I don't want to hear. Because if somebody on this bench, y'all not gonna like it. And I want y'all to know. I want y'all to know. I don't care. So first, starting five. This is the easiest part. We're gonna Steph, Book. I'm gonna put Anthony Edwards in there. Atlanta always wins. Braun at the four. AD at the five. We playing small ball. There's no big countries. We good. You're not gonna start KD. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna give KD to Larry Bird. Like, okay, okay, okay. You know the dream team. Okay. You know, I'm gonna come out there. I'm gonna match y'all. I'm gonna hoop with y'all. You know, KD hey. may start over at the Edwards. Hey, KD, it's seven. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the bench, let's say all right. So I, I keep with you know KD. You know, other statesman, let him okay. let him book in them. You know, okay. this Braun last ride, he'll start. So KD coming off the bench. Next is KD. I got Westbrook playing full court defense. I like every that. single game I like that. of the Olympics, I like, like he that. did the first time, mm-hmm. and he's still doing it in the NBA. I know he can do it. Don't leave me comments about his gun. I was gonna shoot. I don't care. So I got Westbrook there. Of course, Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. That's where you know Embiid will be on. Embiid will be on here because you know he a loser. Uh, <laughs> Tatum, of course. Two more. Two more. This is where it gets dicey. This is where it gets dicey for real. Because Olympic competition is a little, mm-hmm. a little interesting. And I did. And you usually get a young player. 
And you usually get a hit. That's not going to play for them. I must. I, I think Paolo makes it. I okay. think Paolo will be the guy they choose. Okay, the young guy. I like that. I what think he'll it? be the. I think he'll be the last young guy, and the last, last real hooper to make it. Let me think. I think this last guy will be more of like he'll have to fit a role, kind of. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm gonna say Josh Hart. Okay. I'm gonna okay. say. Listen, okay. listen. He played hard. Okay. Brings a unique skill set to the yes, table. A rebounding shooting guard who yes, don't want to shoot. Yes, he does. You know, I like it. Mm-hmm. I can't really think of anybody. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I thought somebody else. The last guy, I like. If I was to build a roster, it's a hard dream roster. Mm-hmm. I would have one specialist, mm-hmm. and it would be Jared Vanderbilt. Okay. It, okay. it would be one of the Jared Vanderbilt, Lou Dort. Whatever, whoever I thought was the best perimeter defender on earth would be that last spot. Okay. And at this point, I would, I would say Jared Vanderbilt. Okay, I like that. So, my starting line is pretty much the same as yours. At one, I'm going Steph. At two, I'm going Book. At three, I'm going – actually, sorry. At one, I'm going Steph. At two, I'm going Tatum. At three, oh, I'm going – At three, I'm going – you said Tatum on your bench. No, no, I forgot somebody, though. I just okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Right. At one, Steph. Two, Book. Up. Uh, one step, two Tatum, three Braun, four KD, five eighty, right. six. We gotta say Joel. He's on the winning team. So Joel is at six, seven off the bench. And Edwards, Devin Booker. Um, I am going to say Draymond Green mm-hmm. for to fulfill the specialist role. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I, like I think that. this is going to be a veteran led team with right. a few of the young superstars they deem the up and coming superstars. Yeah. And I think he'll fit right in on that role as playing role 12, 15, nice. 12, 20 minutes a game. Um, so Draymond Green would be a little crazy. Nice spot with LeBron out here. So nine, Draymond Green. Ten would be, <laughs> and I don't know if he'll do this. I don't know if he'll play, but we haven't set a backup point guard. My backup point guard is John Morant. I hope he agrees. Okay. I hope he agrees. I don't know if he will, but John Morant. Eleven will be, uh, um, I am going to say another vet because I don't think it'll be too many young teams, and I like the Russell Westbrook pick. You convinced me of that. Okay. I'm going to go Russell Westbrook. And at 12, I'm going to go the young guy because you said Paolo. I'm just going to say somebody different mm-hmm. and say they take, um, let's see. I can't think of anybody else, really. Howard? I think it'll be Paolo. I think Paolo is such a good answer. Yeah. Like, I really think it'll be Paolo. Yeah. I do think that 12 spot would be Paolo. And I would I would bring Paolo, too. So it's like, that would be my answer. My, my change to my team, I, don't, I forget who I had on my team. Somebody's got to stay home. Kyrie's one. Oh, sorry. Somebody. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. Somebody. Somebody. Hey, hey, sorry, Russell Westbrook. Uh, you will not be coming anymore. Uh, Kyrie will be there. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, how the fuck, fuck I forgot Kyrie? How the hell? What the this fuck? is what I do. Russ will fill that specialist role. Yeah. And then Kyrie, Kyrie will play. And Jared will play. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's what I'll say. I'll say Russ can stay. We just not going to bring no young niggas. Sorry, Paolo. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie <laughs> is coming. Kyrie is coming. Um, she need to go to Paris for it, nigga. Because I want I want Jaron, too. Yeah. I, want, I think John's John highlight. John 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 over somebody like Vince did. Nah, John might start a war for real. <laughs> so, John Duncan and niggas start throwing it up. <laughs> LeBron and Steph on the same team is going to start the war. <laughs> <laughs> John's gonna catch a full court oof from LeBron and hit the ground, start throwing his setup in Paris. <laughs> like <laughs> he's gonna throw up neighborhood in the middle of the Olympics. <laughs> I'm from M Town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I am I am really excited for that. So who who is the leading scorer on that team though? From the team we said who is the leading scorer? Pretty much those are pretty much the rosters from next year, give or take one or two players. So who do you think the leading scorer on the next on the US? I don't want us to be on the nose because I know the nigga is like just love Steph Curry, but in a vacuum, if I propose this to you, Steph Curry playing on a shorter three point line. Holy shit! That is what the, that, like, the people line is not the NBA line. Like Steph Curry shooting one leg NBA three pointers. So uh, what he'll do in FIBA, like especially especially what we saw with Melo. Like Melo wasn't like Melo, one of the best Olympic scorers I've ever seen. Melo wasn't catching it low block, child. you know what? Regular Melo, he was just Dude. catching and shooting, sparking. Catch and you. because the NBA line is shorter, the minis was threes now. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It would maybe step or a you know uh, a dark horse, which, which I would hate. Maybe Joel Embiid, mid range guy, mm-hmm. big. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get a lot of freebies. Mm-hmm. A lot of people on the court looking to pass. 
a lot of creators on the court. You can be biggest guy on the court. You can win it by 30 every game. Man, yeah, listen. Six dunks, eight threes. You know? So, I think there's no wrong answer because we're talking about the 12 or 14. Thanks. But I think it's going to be real hard to stop KD from being the leading scorer. Yeah. But if it is not KD, I am going to say what you said and go with Steph because I just think Steph – because I don't – with the lineup I said, which was Steph, Tatum, KD, Braun, and B, I think Braun is playing point guard, and yeah. they're going to use Steph as an off-ball two guard and right. kind of serve that purpose as a mellow role, but to a greater extent because, you know, he's Steph Curry. So yeah. I think KD or Steph – Will lead the league. Will lead the team in scoring. And if it's not them, if it's like we know the stories Olympics, oh the vets are gonna kind of take a back seat for most of this yeah. ride. Then it'll be D-Book. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't, and I don't think it'll be in B because I think the rules will affect him a lot. But change right. rules, oh, yeah, he's not being able to lead the paint. Yeah. But goaltending, I think how he plays basketball, that's gonna affect him a lot. Yeah, and that's all shit not falling in either. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't like yeah. <laughs> but the Steph thing, like, it's so hard for me to pick somebody else against him because, like, even even if they are using him volume wise, like, eight threes over four quarters feels like a lot outside of the Olympic basketball. Like, on the court with these guys, Steph Curry getting two open threes a quarter does not feel far fetched, and that's just in the regular flow. Like, I expect him to adjust to the runs yeah. after one or two games, and it's gonna get ugly. But, but yeah. Y'all wanted y'all wanted the dream team. Y'all wanted us to show y'all about be the best in the world. Y'all wanted to see why we showed y'all. Bro, shout we call ourselves bro. world shirt champions. Shout out to Noah Wilds. You played the long game. Maybe this was right, bro. Maybe he was just trying to get. Bro, I here. said it, Dave. Listen, <laughs> no, if you really did this, bro, like, yo, we don't gotta tell nobody. Let me know. Because day one, I was like, I see what this nigga is doing. And come, come interview. Come, come. We, listen, we knew. Um, we knew. So, uh, you got anything else? Uh, no, no, I just said. All right, man, we, we hit everything from Drake NFL to the Olympic Dream Team. So, uh, Offset is on the way. Enjoy the Drake album. Tap into the Earl Sweatshirt album. Facts. Uh, be looking out for Nikki in a few weeks. Um, uh, who else is dropping in a few weeks? Benny is dropping in a few weeks. Uh, we got uh, Future of Metro coming before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't really know who else. I would say Lil Wayne, but I don't really nothing he's saying no more. Oh, um, my fault. I actually do have. <laughs> so last night, actually, a bunch of Kanye music got leaked last night on his YouTube. Mm-hmm. A bunch of stuff got leaked. Then removed from his YouTube, mm-hmm. which of course it's YouTube. But it is confirmed by TMZ that Kanye's working on two albums right now. Mm-hmm. One with Ty Dolla Sign, and then there's another Kanye album. And I think Ty Dolla Sign posted the cover. But, like all Kanye news or Lil Wayne news, all Take GOAT news, news. <laughs> remember these are like grown, almost billionaire, or well, billionaire Kanye case, artists who are just doing shit. So, if this never leaves the Kanye room floor, I don't want anybody to be surprised. But I was about to say, like, yeah, like you you are a smart Kanye fan, not one of the ones that thought an album was coming out of the Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so. don't, don't be, listen, don't be one of those people. Don't so, uh, those people. do you think an album will be coming next year? No. Oh, no. Maybe maybe not so late next year. I, I was about to say I can see one coming in the next year, but I yeah. I think Kanye is just doing a hundred things for once. Right, yeah. music is just one of them. Cause he made a town, so like, I, like that would keep me busy, but pretty busy. Like, like if I had a town, that would keep me pretty busy. <laughs> Imagine if Covington was just yours. Yeah, like you got a whole town. Like you like if you pulled up to some shit. Like if you pulled up to a, a store, like, man, I'm not arguing with that. <laughs> I don't like that show. Let's, let's put some else right there. Right? That Walmart on 278 is yeah. a sports authority. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Priya can write your mind over a little album. Yeah, no, that's so I think that's it. But other than that, great show. Episode 52. Um like, subscribe, comment. Like comment, subscribe. What should we call this episode? Um what do we start off with? Drake. It has to be some Drake later. Yeah. Uh it's a business. It's a business. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it's it a out. business. Or he's a businessman. We'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. Uh, you guys watch us brainstorm live in real time. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yep. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back when you see us. Um, please follow our socials below. And it, tell a friend to tell a friend. And if you're watching this and want to come on the show, DM the show's Instagram page. I may say no to you. If you look scary, I'm going to say no to you. Um, we record in my home. I'm not just letting anybody in here. That's so, um, so you have to be nice. I probably do have to know you. But if you if you really are an artist or you just love sports and you want to come chop it up with us or you have your own podcast and a couple of y'all want to do a collab, just let us know. DM us um, or hit one of us on Twitter. Like I said, it's in the bio. Y'all have a blessed day. Have a blessed night. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Drake. 
and we will see you in two. So, episode 52. Yep.